Hello, welcome to Flyers TV for Friday Night Hoops in the British Basketball League between the Bristol Flyers and the Manchester Giants live from the SGS College Arena. Very warm welcome to you at home. My name's Joel Osborne. Very pleased to be joined in studio by former Bristol Flyers captain Gareth Till. And Gareth, the Flyers tonight, they're coming in off of a defeat to Surrey Scorchers in the uh, game last weekend. Start of a big double header for them, of course, Manchester tonight and Surrey again tomorrow. Yeah, some big games coming up in the British Basketball League and European competition as well. But looking to, to bounce back from that defeat against Surrey. Very close game, but I'm sure at home they'll want to put things right and get back uh, to start this run of games with a W. What kind of game are you expecting out there tonight? Because, of course, on one hand, you've got the Flyers that are looking to bounce back from a defeat. On the other hand, you've got Manchester Giants that have lost their last six games in the British Basketball League. Yeah, the Giants are going on a, on a tough run. Um, they've certainly got the, the players capable of winning winning games, that's for sure. Got some players back from injury, some big big players, William Lee, Legend, Roberta, and so they're going to be a handful for a lot of teams. So they're going to look to break that duck and get back to winning ways because they certainly have the talent to do it. Well, here's a look at the players arriving at the SGS College Arena ahead of tonight's game. And uh, Gareth, it's the start of a busy run of games. You mentioned, of course, Surrey tomorrow, Poland on Tuesday in the European North Basketball League. Of course, tonight's opponents, the Manchester Giants, them themselves looking to bounce back uh, from defeat. Someone's going to break that duck here tonight. But, of course, a big night as well for new Bristol Flyers signing CJ Jackson. Who, of course, they managed to bring in uh, quite a late deal in the end. I mean, of course, they've had injury troubles, the Bristol Flyers, this season. What does CJ Jackson bring to the Bristol Flyers this season? Well, we know he had a, a spell with Leicester Riders, so he knows the league reasonably well. A very experienced player. It's going to be, you know, difficult for him to jump in, sort of, in, in the team straight away. Particularly as a point guard, learning the systems, getting used to his teammates. But you know, he's just going to go out there and I'm sure play. And, and Coach Capullo's given him the confidence to, uh, to to start the game, I believe. So um, yeah, he's just going to go out, go balling and, and see what happens, really. But yeah, it's good to have that replacement. So there's been a, a terrible run of injuries for the Bristol Flyers. So to be able to replace someone pretty quickly, especially at that position, is very, very key. Well, CJ Jackson arrived in Bristol earlier on this week and uh, we had a chance to catch up with him in his first official interview as a Bristol Flyers player. Well, CJ, welcome to Bristol Flyers. How does it feel to be back playing in the British Basketball League? I'm excited to be here. All the guys pretty much just welcomed me here from the get-go. That's really all I can ask for. Um, I'm just ready to get going, get some games under my belt. Uh, the team is having a good year, and I just want to help the team any way I can. And this has all happened very quickly from your point of view. I mean, just tell us how fast this whole process came about. I would say less than 24 hours, honestly. Everything's been moving fast. It's still moving fast at this point. It's been since four days now, but that's what the life we live, and I'm excited to be here. You join us initially on a short-term contract with the Flyers. Just talk us through those conversations you've had with Coach Kapoulos and what he expects from you during this time. Uh, he just wants me to be myself. He hasn't asked me to be anything different than what I've done in the past or what I can provide for the team. So knowing that, he has instilled confidence in me, and then also the guys have you know, instilled confidence in me just to be myself and not to you know, be anything I don't have to. So that's the biggest thing, just trust with the coach and trust with the team. You're no stranger to the British Basketball League. Of course, you had that spell with the Leicester Riders at the start of last season. Just how do you look back on, on that experience and how excited are you to be back playing in the league once again? Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, just be, I just want to show what I can do. Obviously, it didn't go the way I wanted to last time with Leicester. Um, shout out to those guys. Though. They have a great uh, program, coaching staff, everything. So uh, it just didn't work out, but now I'm here today and I'm ready to help Bristol. You spent most of your career playing out in Sweden. Just... What was that experience like for you? How's that helped you develop your game? And, and, and how can that help you bring stuff to the Flyers this season? Uh, just being a natural point guard, I was able to play my natural position in Sweden. That was pretty much the reason why I kept, continued to go back, along with the culture, the food, everything, just the lifestyle in Sweden I like. And for those that haven't had a chance to see you play, how would you describe your game out there on the court? I would just say I'm just a person who brings what the game needs, um, whether it's scoring, rebounding, assisting, steals. It doesn't really matter. It's not one thing that you can be good at. You have to be well-rounded. So I would just say that's pretty much me. 
Well, you, you're being thrown straight into the fire. Of course, big double header weekend this weekend. Manchester on Friday, Surrey on Saturday, and then a trip out to Poland on Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. Uh, you want to play games, you know. That's the reason why uh, you train for all summer. You train in the preseason just for these big games. So I'm excited, and I think the team is excited as well. Well, CJ Jackson talking to us there in his first official interview as a Bristol Flyers player. And Gareth, we mentioned, of course, that he had that spell with Leicester Riders last season. It didn't quite work out for him. I know he wasn't at full strength, but I'm sure, you know, this second time round in the league, he'll be keen to show what the British, uh, to show the British Basketball League what he's all about. Yeah, certainly. You know, as you said, it didn't work out for him last year, but different, different style of play, different coach, different team. And he said he sort of wasn't at full fitness uh, with the Leicester Riders. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll want to come back into the league and, and let everyone know the fans out there and the league know what he's about and what he's capable of doing. How difficult is it for a player to join a team midway through a season? Not only to join a team that's playing well and, and try and fit into that system, but as a point guard as well. I mean, that's one of the most important positions on the floor. Yeah, there, there probably is a little bit of additional pressure, but I'm sure from a, his point of view, you know, getting to play for a team like the Bristol Flyers that are going through a, you know, a good run at the moment as well, and to be part of it and to be wanted by the coach, you know, just to be out there performing. So it, it's a bit of a, a, a you know, a double-edged sword, really. I mean, he'll want to prove himself. There'll be a bit of extra pressure on that point guard position. You know, a lot of responsibility, but he'll be he'll be excited to be out there playing basketball in front of fans. He's got a big matchup on his hands tonight. The likes of uh, Nick Lewis as well, and he's a guy that can really get hot in a hurry for Manchester. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They've got a lot of players. You know, Nick Lewis can get hot, as you said, quite quickly. He loves to shoot the basketball. You need to be sort of switched on defensively. You know, that'd be very important as well. It's not just offense. It's everything that he brings um, to the table. But, yeah, certainly Giants do have a lot of players that can score quickly. Uh, and he'll need to be sort of fully concentrated on the scout. Well, let's take a look at how the teams are shaping up heading into tonight's game and uh, CJ Jackson Gareth you mentioned him uh, there in the build up straight into the squad expected to make his Bristol Flyers debut here tonight well exactly it's having that experience of the point we go sort of keep banging on about a point guard position but it's such a crucial role and, and Coach Kapoulas feels that he's ready to, to jump in he said he'll have a lot of um, things to learn about the team uh, a lot of the systems but you know he'll let him know to run through a few plays and obviously confident with his, with his ball handling his distribution his score ability so yeah why not chuck him in and um, and put him straight out there and see how he performs of course no Keedy Johnson no T. John Lucas tonight for the Flyers who will be out for the next six to eight weeks it was announced this week with a hamstring strain if we look at the other end of the court Manchester they're looking to break that duck out there on the court you know six straight defeats for them um, but surprisingly Gareth the, the bulk of their points this season have come through their British core you know the likes of Jamel Anderson Nick Lewis and Legend Robertin as well yeah exactly I mean it, it's great from a from a British point of view that the, the, you know they've got players stepping up and taking all that responsibility so you know I wouldn't sort of take that as a, as a negative you know it's great that British players are, are, are stepping up and trying to sort of um, you know, combined with the American imports as well and Canadian imports that they have, but I'm sure they're you know they'll take points from anywhere just to try and break this you know 6-0 uh, run that they've gone without a win. So uh, I think it's more defensively where the issues are coming from from Manchester. Um, so those will be the issues that they'll want to address. And I'm sure welcoming back um, you know William Lee to the fold and getting a good run of games will, will help defensively as well and rebounding. Well, you mentioned William Lee there. Of course, he came back from injury last week in that game against the Newcastle Eagles. Um, a huge impact player for the, uh, for the Manchester Giants. I mean, here you see some highlights of him up on the screen. Nine points, four rebounds on his return from injury in just 16 minutes off the bench and just showing glimpses of what he can bring to this Giants side. Yeah, I just remember watching him last year when he signed for Giants and how impressed I was early on. I think Flyers played them very early last season and was really impressed with William Lee. Obviously he had a spell at Leicester Riders as well, but he's 6'9", very versatile, he can shoot the ball, block shots, and like that, finishes strong around the rim as well. So a very complete basketball player and you know, a big loss for the Giants, not having him in the squad. Very happy to see him back for, for the Manchester Giants and also the league. Yeah, back for his second season, as you say, uh, with Manchester. And Gareth, if he's able to stay healthy, you'd like to think that they can put together some wins to work their way up the league table. Yeah, and, and they should. He's certainly got a, a lot of talent there, uh, but it is that case of just keeping you know, William Lee uh, fit and healthy. He had a you know, spell out last, last season as well, so I'm sure the Giants will be doing everything to try and you know, manage his minutes and make sure he can get as much you know, games under his belt as possible and build up that strength. 
Thanks. And looking at the other end of the court uh, for the Bristol Flyers, Trajan Jacob has really stepped up for Coach Kapoulis' side since the injury to Keedy Johnson. He's been slotted into the starting lineup and has put together a number of big performances in recent weeks. Of course, this 18 point game against Surrey Scorchers last week. Yeah, it's all about confidence, um, you know, especially as a, as a shooter as well. Uh, he's not thinking twice he's sort of making these step back moves and that's a player that's playing really well and if you've got confidence and you're a shooter then you just roll with it and yeah, sort of say you know sometimes it might not be the best shot or in rhythm but when you're shooting the ball so well just keep rolling with it until you stop you know, until you stop scoring and he's certainly on a roll right now yeah he always has those shots where you're always like no 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 yes 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 good shot uh, when you look at him out there on the court yeah I'm sure the coach <laughs> will you know, be thinking that that's not you know, that's, the, that's not the play that's not the system but then when you're just sort of pulling up making those shots all's forgiven and everything's forgiven when it goes in the net yeah there you see his uh, confirmation of his performance against Surrey uh, last week 18.6 boards and 2 assists and Gareth he certainly will be a key factor for Bristol Flyers with these injury problems they have as well. Yeah, it's going to be managing, you know, the, the load that, that Bristol flies, and you know, a couple of you know fairly serious injuries. We, we're missing Cunningham from the start of the season. Not even played a league game, and and now uh, Tijon Lucas uh, out as well. And we had um, you know previous injuries with the Raul Gray and Bell. So it's not been easy for the Bristol Flyers, but they've come through that adversity and you know, are still on a good run. They find themselves third in the league at the moment. So they are digging deep and they're getting those rotations. And, and almost when you have a shorter rotation, players know that they're going to play. There's not that additional pressure of, you know, if they kind of mess up or make a mistake, they're going to be sat back down. You know, they, they need to be out there playing. And that almost gives you that extra confidence to play and just relax a bit. Well, Trajan Jacob was just one of the players this past week who's been out in the community uh, for the uh, Bristol Flyers delivering half-term holiday camps uh, to the kids. We've got a video package coming up here to see what it's all about. Last academic year, so 2022-2023 academic year, we saw circa 13,000 children. That was across our community, our holiday and our curriculum sessions. Um, the year previously, so 2021-2022, uh, we saw around 8,000. So yeah, a significant growth there. Um, the scary thing is, is there's still demand out there. Um, and we're, we're constantly growing in terms of what we're doing as a community team to make sure that we can provide as many children as possible with those opportunities. Sport in general, but basketball in particular, is something that is so good for, um, it's really benefiting the lives of young people, especially people in different circumstances. So I'm just hoping that we can really impact like, people's lives as a whole through this, and that's what PSF is doing. I know what it's like to be around professionals at that age, and I had a lot of like really good guys that was kind of coaching and encouraging me at that age, like Greg Street, Ty Treasury Royal, and those types of guys. So I'm trying to really be that for them. So it's always good to be involved in the sport, especially at a young age, because it, it's great for you physically and also mentally. And I feel it's quite important as well because if you it gives you more opportunities, if you're looking to take basketball as a career path, it gives you a lot of opportunities to learn. And of course we had the Flyers first team down here earlier. Just describe what that experience was like getting to talk to them, getting them involved in your drills. Um, it's really fun. I know a couple of them from past camps, so it's always nice to uh, see how they're doing. And they're, they're the best of the best, so it's always great playing with them. It's a good experience. But it's always nice to give good advice and they're always just really friendly people. Yeah, I got it, Energy on three. One, two, three. Energy! Energy. There we go. Yeah, always good to see the Flyers out there in the community, inspiring the next generation of Bristol basketball players. Well, tip-off is right around the corner, so it's time to take a short break, but we'll be right back. And when we come back, we'll be hearing from Bristol Flyers head coach, Andreas Kapoulis. Toes, baby, you think a little too small. I got big goals, baby. Hey, where the money? I look, I just need the info. Pronto, I go and get hard to climb at all. At the top, I found some relief. I finally got some peace. Carry on, but don't mess up the mood. I put the 
working, you put the work in, everyone knows you deserve it. Yeah. They must be blind like curtains, certain. Anything you got, you've earned it. Earned it. Sky is Can't stop me, I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. Every time they wanna clash, I'm unbeatable. Chance is running out of stock. And we're running out of time. I found what's gonna stop. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. Turn, watch and learn how many years been working for my stuff. Oh, step like roller coaster. Oh. This one right here for the coach. I am a beautiful. I am a beautiful, yeah. Ah, the Thatcher's farm. Slightly obsessed perfectionists making cider with nothing but love. As you do. I mean, why grow eight varieties of apple when you can grow 458? Mmm, the apple spa. Because happy apples make better cider, obviously. Here comes the man himself, Martin Thatcher. Friday, 12.30, tasting time. It needs to hit the spot or not a drop will leave the farm. Yes! And that's why Thatcher's cider tastes the way it does. Perfect. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Good. Naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive. And then you would get more and more adventurous. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. Welcome back to Flyers TV, where we're all set for Bristol Flyers versus Manchester Giants right here on the Bristol Flyers YouTube channel. Now, this is the second time that both of these teams are playing each other this season. And last time out, this one went right down to the wire. It's all been happening from the perimeter, but can they get something going elsewhere? And it's again. Oh, nice little Shakir. Well, yeah, I want to call that Hakeem, the dream move there by Jamel Anderson. You've seen him on the perimeter. There he is in the post getting busy. Three coming up to set the ball screen. Flyers looking to retake the game. The three is up. The first tray ball for the Flyers comes from downtown. Secure possession. Johnson kicks this one out. They go for another three pointer. Walsh able to secure this one. Throws a long pass. Are you kidding? Oh, again, Walsh just threw this one, made the touchdown, and Anderson threw it down with no regard for the feelings of the... They'll go for another three-pointer. Pat in his face, can't get it, but the follow-up, no good again. The Flyers still without any second-chance points, but the transition play... Well, if he looked up ahead, he would have got it, but the three is up. Oh, baby! Are you kidding me? Flyers need to find a bit of momentum. Takes the pass, tries to go down the middle, just in and around the defense, and again, making it look easy. Giants defense, good at rotating, good at closing out. Flyers have to put this one up. Hell Mary 3's been put up, and again, oh, I think at this point here in Manchester, if you throw up anything and use the bank board, it's going in. Well, the only foul trouble concern for the Giants is Jamel Anderson. He does have three. Well, there's a pump fake, puts up the three, the three is up. It gives them a two-point lead. The Flyers, composure. Here's the pump fake. Tevin Olsen letting it rain from the perimeter. But again, showing his versatility as a scorer, a tough shot fake step in. Says he likes to model his game after Paul George, and you saw the fluidity there. Goodness gracious, Keaton Johnson above the rim. I think he could have dunked that. Missing only one free throw so far this evening. And there's the 16th turnover for the Flyers. Johnson's going to go the way, and again, Jamel Anderson didn't want to pick up. 
Johnson being defended by Lewis. Lewis going over the ball screen. Johnson goes up. The fault the follow in is good as Leslie Smith just cleaned it up. Alanison currently with the ball in his hands. Find McNeil. Lewis looking to penetrate. Goes up, avoids the block of the end. Getting it to roll. A strong drive by Nick Lewis. You made the defense work, and that puts you in a position to get an offensive rebound so you can live with that. That's a tough shot. But he, wow. <laughs> wow. This might be the most exciting team to watch in the British Basketball League. <laughs> But Lucas has to make this one. Try to tie the game up. 1.31 to go. Missed them both. But an offensive board. And the putback is good. Well, JT, Giants at the wrong moment. Well, Basel fans currently joining us here on the British Basel YouTube. Well, just avoiding the backcourt violation. At the end of this one, the Bristol Flyers will leave with a victory 91 to 87. Well, it was a four-point win for Bristol Flyers when they met away from home. But, Gareth, the Flyers were able to create separation in that game in the second quarter. But a big lead like that, you can't, get, you can't take your foot off the gas because a team like Manchester Giants, they have that ability to, to go on a huge run. Well, certainly in the British Basketball League, we've seen a lot of teams go on runs and there's a lot of talent out there and you have to play, it's the old cliche of playing 40 minutes, but if you have a you know a poor spell defensively, teams can catch up pretty quick or extend that lead. So you have to you know fully concentrate for those 40 minutes and, and Manchester, as you rightly said, came right back in and made a close game of it. All five starters finished in double figures and that just sort of shows for, for, for Bristol Flyers and that just shows just how much depth they have this season. I know despite the injury problems they have right now, any guy can get hot on any given night. Yeah, and it just it's, it's great sort of teamwork, really. You know, Coach Kapoulis, we've seen over the past three seasons now, his team really buy into his system. You know, they love to share the ball, that extra pass, getting players open. Um, so, you know, there, there's full credit to, to Coach Kapoulis that he's getting team or players in that are able to play, play his system and have his input in on how these guys are performing. Great stuff, Gareth. Well, tip-off is right around the corner, but earlier on, we had a chance to speak to Flyers head coach Andreas Kapoulis ahead of tonight's game. Uh, Andreas, a tough defeat at Surrey last weekend. Back in front of the Flyers fans tonight at the SGS. How important is it to get back on track with a win today? Uh, it's very important. I mean, uh, as you say, it was a tough loss. We also suffered an injury uh, to Tijon Lucas. Uh, so this week has been very important, spending time on our team. Uh, we have a new addition as well in CJ Jackson. Uh, we've been working really hard. There's no easy games in the BBL. Uh, and tonight we're playing a very talented team, so we're going to be really locked in. Yeah, you spoke about it there. Obviously, a little bit of roster movement this week. Tijon going down with that injury. You've added CJ into the roster. What does he bring to this Flyers lineup? Well, he brings experience. He's a very talented guy. He can score, he can create, uh, he can defend. Um, and, and he's coming in a crucial time for us. Obviously, both Kiri and Tijon out for an extended period of time. For And uh, he had this whole week uh, to spend to get to know the system, the team. Um, and he's ready to go today. Yeah, and you've got a, a really busy week ahead, obviously back-to-back -back games this weekend, followed by a European road trip. How difficult is it to manage players' workloads and cope with fatigue at this stage? Yeah, it's uh, extremely difficult, um, but uh, we've got to deal with a quick turnaround of the British Basketball League games. It's less than 24 hours and we'll have to take on uh, Sarri away, uh, but we've got to take it one game at a time. We cannot be thinking about the trip to Lublin, the trip to Sarri tomorrow. We've got 40 minutes of basketball ahead of us and we've got to be fully focused on that. And tonight, obviously, second game of the season against the Manchester Giants. You've already beaten them once on the road, but they, they are a strong side. How well do you feel you match up against them? Well, I think uh, they're a very talented team. They have two guys back in Robertin and Lee, uh, both experienced guy. Uh, Lee is a high-level type of player. Uh, obviously, he's coming back from injury. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a very difficult game. I think it's not about how well we match up with them. It's just about making sure no one from their team gets hot. They have multiple threats out there. We've got to defend for 40 minutes. We've got to stay concentrated for 40 minutes and execute on the offensive end. And a tough team who obviously have the capabilities to cause one or two upsets in the league. What's been the key messages to the team tonight to avoid any kind of upset? Uh, work hard, uh, be fully concentrated, locked in in terms of what we're doing. We've got to guard personnel very well. Um, and, and ultimately, we know we didn't perform to the level that we have liked to last week. Uh, so we've got to put it right tonight. Coach, thank you very much. Best of luck tonight. 
Andreas Kapula speaking to Alex Duffel there ahead of tip-off and Gareth, of course, the Flyers. They went on that incredible six-game win streak in the British Basketball League in October. What do they have to do tonight to, to regain that form against Manchester Giants? Well, they've had some adversity with the, uh, you know, with the injuries, of course, but they're playing at home. There's been very noisy at the SGS Wives Arena in front of the home fans. And they get into a ribbon, they play some really good basketball, play some outstanding basketball this season on, you know, on the back of a really outstanding performance last season. And there was a bit of a question mark this year, but the guys have come in, as I said, that they're playing really good team basketball. Um, so they'll just be up for this game. They've had a nice little sort of few days off, so they'll be ready for this, this game, uh, upcoming game and get back to, to winning ways after their defeat to Surrey. Well, let's take a look at the season averages coming into tonight's game. And Gareth, when you look down this graphic that's uh, going to come up on screen, uh, right about now um, season averages across the season of course Bristol Flyers they are the league's leading rebounding team in the league and you look at the other end you know in terms of rebounds Manchester Giants they're dead last is that somewhere some something you feel that Bristol Flyers could take advantage of tonight Certainly do. I mean, but you know, so we welcome back, uh, you know, William Lee and Ledger Robert, and that's almost certainly going to help their rebounding statistics. You've got a guy that's seven foot one and six foot nine coming back into into the squad, so that's certainly going to help help rebounding. I think points conceded, you know, clearly ninety four points conceded for Manchester Giants. You know, that's again something they're going to want to want to look at. So you know, defense and rebounding for Manchester Giants uh, are going to be uh, are going to be important, and turnovers as well. Both teams quite high up on the turnover um, you know, both averaging well 15 turnovers a game so you know both coaches will want their team to look after the ball just finally can I tempt you for a score prediction tonight Gareth no <laughs> <laughs> no I, score prediction yeah. from Gareth Till. I think it's going to be a high scoring game it's going to be a high scoring game <laughs> She is the Bristol Flyers at captain. I go for the home team, but um, you know, I think Manchester Giants very capable team, and certainly you know it wouldn't be a massive shock. We've seen the British Basketball League, you know, last week against Surrey as well. So Manchester Giants certainly capable of winning this game. Home court advantage to the Bristol Flyers. Uh, I'll, I'll tip them for the win. There we go. Well, tip off is right around the corner. Don't go anywhere. It's coming up next. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Good. Naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive. And then you would get more and more adventurous. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. Toes, baby, you think a little too small. I got big goals, baby. Ain't hey, where the money at? Look, I just need the info. Pronto, I go again, hard to climb at all. At the top, I found some relief. I finally got some peace. Carry on, I put myself the mood. Bristol Flyers podcast is back for a brand new season and is now sponsored by Web Games. That's right, we're here to bring you all the latest from around the club and all things British basketball. Whether you're new to hoops or a member of the Flyers faithful, the Flyers podcast has everything you need to get you through those midweek blues. The Bristol Flyers podcast. Every Wednesday on all major podcast providers and YouTube. Thatcher's Farm. Slightly obsessed perfectionists making cider with nothing but love. As you do. I mean, why grow eight varieties of apple when you can grow 458? Mmm, the apple spa. Because happy apples make better cider. 
obviously. Here comes the man himself, Martin Thatcher. Friday, 12.30, tasting time. It needs to hit the spot or not a drop will leave the farm. Yes! And that's why Thatcher's cider tastes the way it does. Perfect. Welcome back to Flyers TV. We're all set for tip-off between the Bristol Flyers and the Manchester Giants. And as both teams get set to take the court, let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. And Gareth, we spoke about CJ Jackson in the build-up to this game. He goes straight into Coach K's starting five. Yeah, sure. Big-time player. You know, need that point guard position, that experience. And Coach Kapula is confident enough to put CJ Jackson in right from the start. And you look at the other end of the court, of course, Nick Lewis, Jalen Harris, Jamel Anderson, William Lee, of course, returning from injury in that last game against Newcastle alongside big man legend Roberta, who is able to win the opening tip, is Nick Lewis. Anderson hands off. Fires up for three, puts it in. And Manchester Giants get the first field goal of this game. Yeah, good, patient offense there as well. Ran through the set with the three-pointer to finish. That's a great start for Manchester Giants on the road. Graham Bell takes the handoff with Ollison. Green now hands off. Jackson, first chance to see CJ Jackson in a Flyers uniform. And straight off the bat, he drops the dime to RGB for two. Yeah, goes up high for... Uh, well, Graham Bell with the finish. Not an easy finish. Able to get it in, but yeah, that'll do a lot of a lot of confidence for CJ. And the first opening offense for the Bristol Flyers. It's like an offensive foul there. Yeah, gonna be offensive foul called against the uh, Giants. And uh, that's one thing that's troubled Manchester this season has been that foul trouble. I mean, they want to keep the likes of uh, Legend Robertin, William Lee. Uh, they don't want them to get in that early foul trouble. No, exactly. You know, they're such big players on both ends of the floor. You, know, you don't want to be in that situation where you're having to rest because of foul trouble. Graham Bell. Top to green. Here's Jackson now. Thought about the three. Pulls it back out. Screen comes from Morel Graham Bell. CJ Jackson again finds RGB. This time the triple is no good. But another offensive rebound. Here's Jackson for three. His second chance is no good. And Manchester can push in transition. Lee, mid-range two, can't convert. And the rebound by Green. That's something we mentioned a bit off-air, Joel, about how Manchester like to push the ball in transition, like to rebound, like to get numbers. They pose a real threat going forward. Anderson pushing in transition and puts it in. Count it. Jamel Anderson will go to the line for a three-point play. He's going coast to coast there, protects the ball, a little hesitation there, a little shimmy, uses his shoulder, gets that contact over uh, RB. RGB. RGB. <laughs> <laughs> All been there, Gareth. Yeah. Well, Janelle Anderson at the line, looking to convert here on a three point play. He's their leading scorer this season for Manchester. 15 and a half points per game. He's unable to convert. On the bonus. Ollison. Jacob. Jacob kicked back to Ollison. Deep three ball on the way. Knocks it down. And we're tied up at five points apiece. Ollison really enjoying that depth, doesn't he? Gives himself plenty of room behind that three-point line. And a very comfortable shooting at that range. Lewis puts it on the floor. He's able to draw the foul on Green. And he'll go to the line to shoot two shots. Gareth, we spoke in the build-up about Nick Lewis. I mean, he, he spoke about how quickly he can get hot in a hurry, but he also has that ability to put it on the floor and also earn trips to the free-throw line. Yeah, he's a, yeah, when he's confident, well, he's, he's a very confident player. I mean, some of the shots that he, that he makes and attempts are crazy, but he's got the ability to do that. And, you know, very creative player, got those step-back moves. You know, those turnaround you know, three points in the last game we saw they sort of dribbled out turn around three point shot you know, it takes an awful lot of confidence to do that and, and Nick, Nick Lewis has got plenty of confidence and that makes him so dangerous of course also he has connections with uh, Bristol Flyers captain Rafael Thomas Edwards they both played in the Great Britain 
under-20s national team together nearly 10 years ago now. So both very familiar with what each other can do. Here's Jacob, pull up three in transition. Ball goes in and out. And that was a very Trajan Jacob shot on that possession. And that's what Comfort's going to do. I was unlucky not to go in, really, but that pull up three, you know, only when you're full of confidence when you attempt that pull up, especially in front of your coach as well, when you've got that on transition to pull up. Oh, what a move. Turns the corner, puts it up and in, and Jalen Harris, his first field goal of the game. Yeah, a lovely finish from Harris. Soft off the glass, high off the glass. Graham Bell fakes the three, drives inside. Anderson's looking to take a charge there. Rebounded by Roberta. Lewis lobbed up to William Lee, who blows the dunk in the end. Bit of miscommunication in transition. Here's Jacob again for three. This time is good. And Trajan Jacob gets his first points of this one. Yeah, not affected by that last one on the, the, the pull-up three that he didn't make. Straight down the other, you know, again on the offensive end. Pulls up for another three. This time makes it. Lewis, spin come from Roberta. Nice pass inside. And it's stripped by Jacob. Guys have numbers if they're quick enough. Jacob, Ollison, open for three. Drains the three. And the Bristol Flyers, their first lead of this game. Yeah, plenty of confidence behind the line, aren't they? Shooting the ball really well. Ollison and Jacob shooting the ball really well from behind the arc this season. Yeah, back and forth, first quarter so far. Jamel Anderson around the back pass to Roberta, who draws the foul. And Jamel Anderson making it look easy out there. He's got eyes all over the place. Yeah, that was a little bit sort of behind the back pass, wasn't it? Get a replay. We're going to get a, a replay of the uh, the three pointer from Allison from distance. And he, you know, we spoke about it in the build up, but he, he certainly is a guy. You know, you leave him that wide open for three. He's been Bristol Flyers' leading scorer uh, this season. He's really stepped up his numbers from last campaign as well. He only averaged 10 points a game last season. This year, you know, you can tell towards the back end of last season. He played Manchester Giants in the playoffs. He had a 27-point performance in the first round, the second leg of that first round. He just picked up where he left off last season. Yeah, exactly. He really stepped up in there. But that's not to say his performance you know, wasn't wasn't yeah it was good in the first half but scoring wise you know we had a lot you know, a lot of good scorers last year vj king jelani watson gale and he took his opportunity and you know, we've said it before this season he's come back with that experience almost that leader quality to take it on his shoulders and to make those shots and to get the team going and Burton blows the second layer but that's a great pass from green and Ollison again with the easy finish He's now got eight first quarter points. Yeah, and the big man becoming provider there with a the backdoor cut from Ollison, able to give it to him where exactly where he wanted it with the finish. Lee fakes the handoff with Harris. Harris looking to go backdoor. Dumps it off to Roberti, who can't finish, and Brad Green with another board. Samuels, open lane. Reverse layup, can't convert. Giants can push in transition. Jacob does well to always keep it in play, but it will go back to Manchester. Here's Harris. Anderson. And for his options, finds Lewis. Ball inside to Roberta. Anderson fires up for three, back iron no good, rebound Ollison. Ollison, screen comes from Green, Ollison to the basket, lays it up and in, and it is a 10 minute Ollison takeover in this first quarter. And that's an easy layup with, uh, with uh, you know, the big man in there, seven foot one, intimidating presence in the paint. Ollison able to see past that with a nice finish. Now up to 10 first quarter points for the Flyers and William Lee knocks down the three at the other end of the floor. Yeah, he loves that position toward the top of the paint there, the top of that three-point line. That's his, where he wants the ball for those three-point opportunities and for such a, a tall man, that versatility, but not the ball down from range. Very difficult to defend. Thomas Edwards inside to Green, going to work on Robertin. No good that time and a rebound 
is taken by Manchester. Lewis in rhythm, drains it. We spoke about it in the build-up, Gareth, but he just needs an inch of space and he'll knock it down. Yeah, he almost, you can almost sense that he wants to do that before he had the ball. There's only one thing in his mind as soon as he caught that. The ball, that quick release. That's a big three points for the Manchester Giants. Ties things up, 15 apiece. 6 nothing run for Manchester. Here's Thomas Edwards looking to respond. He can't convert on the three. Brad Green is stripped by the Giants. And now Anderson... Pushing in transition. Ball into Green. He's going to draw the foul. Uh, on, on Green even. And that's going to be his second personal foul, Gareth. As we approach this uh, timeout call on the floor. And how big could that be for Bristol Burton? He spoke about the foul trouble mm. earlier on in this game. But, you know, he spoke about how William Lee and, and Ledger of Burton, they can't afford to get in foul trouble. Brad Green just picking up his second there. Yeah, that's... Uh uh, something that's going to be concerning Coach Pulis I'm sure and if I think Leslie Smith's going to check in I mean both his fouls very similar actually where he sort of had his hands up referee judged a bit of body there um, but I could see him talk to the referee afterwards sort of understanding what, what he could have done better in that situation um, but yeah it could, it could be massive the likes of Legend Roberto that's a tough match up for anyone here's a look at some of the key plays from this first quarter so far and Tevin Ollison knocking down the triple there 10 first quarter points for him so far in this one and uh, at the other end of the court Manchester Giants are led by Jamel Anderson and Nick Lewis both on five points apiece and Gareth we did see CJ Jackson come in he started the game you know for Bristol Flyers just three minutes so far and then obviously Corey Samuels coming in obviously, he's only been with the team for a, a few days now I imagine just looking to get that familiarity out there on the court yeah exactly just to sort of sell that sometimes you know you just want to get in and you know mentioned sort of Corey Samuels how well he's been playing as well with those extended minutes that he's had and he's put some really you know solid performance and big shots um, so I think almost as a coach you want to sort of almost keep rewarding him for his court time as well get him on early as well so he feels you know encouraged to keep performing as well because you know he possibly thought that he might have the opportunity to start today's game but getting him in early and rotating those minutes between the two kind of keeps both parties happy you mentioned Corey Samuels, of course, he had a season-high 11 points in the Flyers' win over Newcastle Eagles here at the Wise campus earlier on in the season. Knocked down a pair of crucial threes late in that one. As William Lee steps up to the free-throw line. Of course, you mentioned he returned from injury in that game last weekend against Newcastle. Just 16 minutes i be interested to see how many minutes he gets here tonight as he works his way back to full strength. Well, that's it, uh, Joel. You know, you sort of want to build people's strength, so that their their match fitness. Um, so there's no point in just pushing some there. If they're going to get like to get injured again, you'd probably be happy if you got 20 minutes every game for the rest of the season, rather than pushing it and then miss a ton of games. So um, just managing his minutes wisely, I think. Leslie Smith pulls up from the elbow, can't convert. Stolen away by Ollison and. Nandolfi will kick it back out for a new possession. Thomas Edwards driving baseline. Out to Ollison. Two on the shot clock. Samuels lays it up and the shot clock expires. Is it going to be a... Yeah, it's going to be a shot clock violation called on the floor. As well as was Gareth Way, just didn't even see how long was left on the possession there. Yeah, I caught that one late with the two with the two seconds. But yeah, did, did, did sort of did caught caught everyone out uh, with the 24 second violation. Good defence from Manchester. Still tied up at 15 apiece. Under three minutes to go in the first. Lewis finds Anderson. Ball is up, no good. Leslie Smith with the rebound. Ollison kicks it out to Smith Smith almost lost control of it inside Anthony Smith going to work puts it up and in and Bristol flies back on top by two good straight from Leslie back in his player down a little hook shot in good position in the paint there oh good hesitation from Nick Lewis all the way to the hole Nick Lewis making it look easy out there Up to seven points so far in this one.
Hollisett looking inside for Smith. Comes off his leg though. Ryers keep hold of it. Shot Fox down to six. And Leslie Smith, a pair of back to back scores for the Bristol Flyers. Yeah, that's some good post up play. First one backing down his player. That second one, a bit of mid range shooting. Good shot from Leslie. Borsier driving inside. Stolen away by Ralph Thomas Edwards. Just stripped it from the Giants. Landolfi open for three. And the rebound is secured by Manchester. Anderson. Guarded by Landolfi. Full screen comes. Lewis back, back to Jamel Anderson. Blocked by Leslie Smith. He's all over the court right now. <laughs> Bringing the ball out. Leslie Smith. Then a bit of point guard now. Is he able to draw the foul? And Leslie Smith, who just scored the last two buckets for Bristol, got a block at the other end of the court and now fancied himself as a point guard yeah, out there. So he's enjoying himself for there. Point guard here. A little hesitation himself. To get that contact. But yeah, Leslie, again, you talk about sort of confidence and. You know, Leslie had some big games last season. In fact, I think this season he's playing better than he did play, play last season. You know, just feel the versatility with his post-up play, his defense. And we all know that Leslie loves to pass as well. He enjoys getting the ball in his hands and finding his teammates, especially big to big. Well, we had him on the Bristol Flyers podcast this week, and he said, you know, obviously this is his second year back of his second spell with the club. Last season he had two years out from his career. He took a mini break in his career, so he didn't really find full game fitness until halfway through sort of the back end of last season but now this year you know coming back to the Bristol Flyers he's been able to train all summer and right off the bat he's had extended minutes with the injury to Christian Cunningham and you've seen it out there on the court he's had some impressive play so far and really filled that void that Christian Cunningham left yeah it just looks like he's really enjoying his basketball as well I mean you know what a great job when you're out there and you're enjoying what you're doing and you know Leslie's got that responsibility that role coming off the bench but he's really contributing both ends of the floor Stolen away by the Flyers. Stolen back by the Giants, though. McNeil trips it away. Three ball is up. No good as the shot clock expires. And it's that man again, Leslie Smith, with the rebound. Here he comes again, pushing in transition. And a careless pass gives it back to Manchester. Borsier. Shot and game clock are almost identical here. Borsier driving inside up against Smith. Ball kicked out. Mid range two off the back iron. Offensive rebound secured by the Giants, and that will do it for the end of the first quarter. A back and forth first period, Gareth, but Bristol flies with a narrow lead after the first 10 minutes. Yeah, not much to, uh, to call it at all there. Uh, Joel, both teams playing some great stuff, some great individual play. Mick Lewis carrying on his scoring form Leslie Smith getting it done on both ends of the floor Tevin Ollison, Traylon Jacob you know having a, a very good uh, very good game out there at the moment well looking at the scorers in this one so far Tevin Ollison leads the way 10 first quarter points for him and Gareth he really came out firing from all cylinders he's 4 for 4 from the field right now yeah exactly and it's all sort of in rhythm shots as well he's not forced anything and that's what I enjoyed about the team last year as well. Nothing was forced, and, and, and same with this time. It was all sort of dropping to him where he wants it to be, taking the right shots, making the right decisions, and it's just coming very naturally for him right now. You see that pass from CJ Jackson, the first possession of the game, getting himself involved. I imagine that must fill in with a little bit of confidence coming in you know, for his Bristol Flyers debut. Oh, it certainly does, you know, when you're out there for the first time, and it's, uh, it's certainly a different environment at SGS. It's quite close in. You hear the fans and... Uh, so sort of just to have that impact, just to make that assist, or just just sort of settle his his nerves down as well. I'm sure the uh, a kids get back out there and, and, and get involved with the uh, with the action. Flyers leading the rebound battle early on in this one. We've been, we built it up in the uh, the pregame. You know, this is the team that leads the league in rebounds versus the team that's bottom of the league in rebounds. 
Of course, Manchester have had injury problems, though, to the likes of Legend Roberton and William Lee. So I imagine that's why that number is down there. Yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, they're sort of two, you know, probably the two tallest players out there on, on the court, and they're, you know, big big bodies to grab those boards down. But, you know, I've seen over the years, Bristol Flyers love a rebound, love going after those offensive rebounds. And, and that is one thing Co Coach Capulas prides his team on, is getting after those boards and getting second chance opportunities. Leslie Smith's been a real impact player for Bristol Flyers in this first quarter. I mean, you spoke about it, he's had a couple of back to back scores, getting blocks and drawing fouls as well and he's really been a spark plug for the, the Flyers in building this early league. Yeah, exactly. We talked about him just going out there enjoying his basketball really and you know Coach Capullo's given those extended minutes and he's sort of really out there just you know there's no uh, there's no apprehension he's just out there playing and, and having fun and, and you know contributing uh, to this Bristol Flyers team. Uh, we are underway for the start of the second. Jackson finds Van Dolphy. Jacob. CJ Jackson back to Smith. Shot clock winding down for Bristol. Leslie Smith again going to work. And his last touch by the Manchester Giants. Four seconds on the shot clock. Jackson to inbound finds Smith for three no good that time and the rebound corralled by Anderson but Neil finds Lawton is Borsier now good ball movement from Manchester Anderson with the step back ball into Lawton backing down Smith turn around hook is off and Leslie Smith with another rebound. Fifth rebound of the game so far for Leslie Smith as Trajan Jacob drives inside. He's, uh, he's down here. They uh, have numbers if they're quick enough, Manchester. As McNeil, uh, McNeil just steps on the sideline. For a number of seasons, they used to be a classic call here. Yeah, we haven't seen that actually that too much. Uh, oh, no, you're right. This season, actually, uh, a, a very common, almost sort of one every game where the, the foot would go out of bounds. But yeah, not seen that recently. Well, there's one for you, Gareth. <laughs> we, uh, get back underway. <laughs> As uh, Jackson brings it up over the timeline. Thomas Edwards. Takes a handoff with Jacob. Jacob, catch and shoot. Undercooks the triple, but reverse layup is called for a goal ten. The basket will count for Trey John Jacob. And, and Gav, just to explain that rule to the some of the viewers back home, the ball it came off the backboard first before um, the, as it Lawton got a, a hand on the shot. So the basket will count there for being a goal ten. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, you just get players who are knocking the ball out before going down the net. So we have that goal-tending, goal-tending rule just to, uh, you know, stop tall players just sort of knocking it around. So as you said, if it's off the backboard there, you have to leave it alone. If it's on its way down, on its trajectory, you can't just knock it away out of the cylinder. Jackson finds Thomas Edwards. Nice pass. And Thomas Edwards can't convert on the triple, but there's Leslie Smith once again on the offensive glass. It's his sixth rebound of the game to go along with eight points. Anderson. Looking inside to Lawton. Oh, what a block from Smith. I think you've got your MVP already, Joel, I think. Landolfi finds Jackson pushing in transition. Smith thought about the shooting the three there. As uh, Liz was looking for that backdoor pass with Thomas Edwards, just ends up throwing out of play. Some changes. Kevin Austin coming back in. RGB back into the game. CJ in. Of course, tonight's game is the first of a double header for both of these teams this weekend. Crystal Flyers tomorrow night travelling to Surrey Scorchers, Manchester. Heading back home to take on the London Lions. Mid-range two, drains it. And that is a much-needed bucket for the Manchester Giants, their first score of the second quarter. Yeah, big pull-up shot from Anderson. 
mentioned Joel, he's leading scorer for the Manchester Giants. You know, he's so well known for his you know, defensive capabilities, but getting uh, getting a job done both ends of the floor for the Giants. Now, Tim Allison responds at the other end, gets his tally up to 12 after scoring 10 first quarter points. McNeil finds Borsier, his three points are no good. Another rebound for Leslie Smith. Wallison, lobbed up oh. to Ruel Graham Bell who jams it in. High flyer at the Wise campus. McNeil looking to respond at the other end, no good. Rebounded by Oleson. He really lobbed that up, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that finish there, but RGB with the athleticism gets up high. Stuffs it down, and he's deceptively athletic. He Ruel Graham Bell. I mean, he has the ability. He's one of the most athletic players on the team. He can. His vertical is ridiculous, and that time, just throw it up there and yeah. let him throw it down. He went after that with the one-handed finish. Yeah, just such a strong, strong body. You know, for that position, not the tallest that position, but his athleticism and strength certainly. Uh, and make up for that lack of height that plays at that sort of 4 3 position. Here's a look at it on the replay. Tevin Ollison. Well, he drives it. That's the, uh, that's the foul, even. Here's Borsier. Lee, wide open. Ball goes in and out. And the rebound secured by Green. Nice pass to Jacob. Jacob able to draw the foul. Him, uh, chance for him to extend this Bristol Flyers lead at the charity strike. Evan Walsh from, uh, from the Giants for the first time this game, and he's another player that I've been you know, very impressed with over the, over the years, and sort of had more minutes in the, the start of the season for the Giants. But again, a young British player, sort of Leicester. We've seen him Surrey, and um, yeah, really impressed with him. I was going to say, I mean, at the start of the season with Evan Walsh, we mm. saw him put into Coach Simonian's starting lineup. Yep. We saw some really promising signs from him early on in the season. I'm not quite sure whether it's injury problems or, or what else, but we've seen him come off the bench. I mean, this is halfway through the second quarter, and he's only just coming in for the first time uh, tonight. But, you know, if you can find Evan Walsh mm. in transition, his transition game is one of the best in the league. Yeah, and, uh, you know, his IQ, basketball IQ is very good. Uh, deceptively quick he said he likes to run the floor but also in transition very good with those sort of those Euro Euro steps and finishes around the basket so yeah I'd like to see uh, Walsh on the court a little bit more and here he goes right inside looking for uh, Harris Harris up against Ollison kicks out to Lawton Lawton with a deep two he's short and the ball just trickles out of bounds Samuels brings it up over the half court. Green finds Ollison. Jacob looking inside for Green. Green takes a bump and soft finish off the glass for the big man Brad Green. Yeah, that's a well run play. Exactly what they wanted off that pick and roll. Green able to regather the ball and a tough finish. Extends that lead for, uh, for Bristol. Well, that is his first field goal of this one. Borsier spins in the lane. Nice pass inside to Walsh. And Walsh says thank you very much as he puts it in off the glass for two. Yeah, it's just that kind of reading the situation over there. Evan Walsh, player turned it back, able to sneak back door and get that layup. Well, media timeout has been called on the floor. Just a word on Leslie Smith's game. I mean, he's coming off the bench. You look down the stat sheet, he's got eight points, he's got six rebounds. Uh, all in just around seven seven minutes of court time so far, Gareth. I know. I mean, uh, so we've talked talked about it quite quite a lot, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we've seen him different time now, but yeah, he's just having fun out there and playing basketball. So we saw the, a big block from him there as well, facilitating passing the ball, just working half the team, and there's that big jam. Graham Bell. I was going to say it's one of those ones, you just throw it up there and he'll go mm. throw it down for you. And then this is that last field goal by Bristol before the timeout. And then a great dime, wasn't it? 
Yeah, you can see uh, Olofsson there just watching. Oh, no, was it Olofsson? Was it Craig John Jacobs? I missed it. He sort of had his back to the player. Evan Walsh saw the opportunity, he snuck back door, and he was a dump off there with that easy two. Well, there you see Giants head coach Brian Simonian, and it's been a tricky task for him this off season. Of course, most of his key players from last year all going separate ways. Mm. The likes of Ramon Fletcher retiring. Been able to keep the services of William Lee, who's been great for them, and obviously now him coming back from injury, that could be big going forward. Uh, but of course, you know the the, the big three that they had uh, last season up in Manchester with like, the likes of Dirk Williams as well, all moving on to pastures new. Yeah, tough, it's tough to, to to lose those sort of players. But obviously, as a coach coming in, you have your own ideas, you have your own systems you want to play, and you know try and bring players in that you feel will work in the system. But there's, you know, there's no question. <laughs> You know, missing the likes of Fletcher uh, and his experience, and you know, you know what a legend he is in the British Basketball League. So of course, you know, of course you'd want him playing for your team if uh, it was possible. But Fletcher's retired, um, Green off to Newcastle. So yeah, a bit of a re rebuilding process. So big shoes to fill for this new look squad in Manchester. Back underway after the timeout. Jones and for the, uh, on the court as well. Here's Corey Samuels. Things to Jacob. Graham Bell guarded by Lee. Turnaround jumper off the glass, no good. Rebounded by Nick Lewis. Lewis. Screen comes from Burton. Pass to William Lee, Reverton looking for it down low, ends up with him. Here he is backing down Brad Green. Turnaround shot, no good, it's great hands by Green. Yeah, Green did well there, good defensive, we've seen a little bit of foul trouble. Ollison for three, knocks it down. And Tevin Ollison has 15 first half points. Yeah, defense into offense, Green with a great start. And then the quick three once more in transition. William Lee, ball goes in and out. Rebounded by Samuels. And Bristol Flyers a chance to extend this lead even further. Jacob pull up three and he is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot three free throws here, Gareth. Yeah, good spell for the Bristol Flyers. Putting it together. All the offense coming from good stops. And Manchester Giants offensively really looking to, to struggle at the moment. And Flyers taking full advantage of their stops and pushing the ball and getting good looks. And uh, an opportunity for three more with this man at the line. It's one of those ones as a, you know, the junior players watching at home. Uh, the coaches always tell you never to foul a three point jump shooter because. Of course, the likelihood of it actually going in is slim as uh, Jacob unable to capitalise on the first. But Gareth, just a word on Tevin Ollison. He's now six for six from the field, three for three from downtown. Hasn't missed yet tonight, and he has 15 first half points. Yeah, that's a great statistic. That I'd be very happy with with uh, the work he's done in this uh, in this first half really stretching out the lead 36 to 21 i mean when you're shooting that sort of percentage good things are going to happen well crazy on jacob a rare pair of free throw misses for him on the first two missed all three of them you don't see that too often Walsh. Guarded by Jacob. Here's Callum Jones. Evan Wolf. Again, guarded by Trader and Jacob. Going to work inside. Takes it, turns around. It's going to be a foul called. A bit too much contact in the paint. And that will send Evan Walsh to the line to shoot two. A oh, foul on the floor, uh, foul, a foul on the floor even. Thank you, pardon. Yeah, Walsh there's claiming he was going up. So he got himself in a bit of a hole there, but good foot. We're able to pivot out of it. Little few pivots there. And yeah. Oh, oh, what a block by Jacob. And he's unable to save it from going out of play. And it's the hustle afterwards, John. It was a, you know, it was a great play with the block, but then 
you know, to kind of re regather yourself and then try and hustle to get that ball. Unable to get it, but you know, talk about young players, you know, really make that first play and then try and you know make the most of that play and get the ball. Tough shot from Lee. Nothing but net for him. And that is a much needed bucket for the Manchester Giants in this second quarter. Brad Green, hook shot off the mark, offensive rebound by Graham Bell. And the spin inside is going to be a travel. Lifted one too many pivot feet on that move there. Lewis with a Hail Mary pass, looking inside for William Lee. What a move, reverse layup is good. And uh, they caught the Flyers napping on the defensive end there. Yeah, quick play for the Manchester Giants. Is that, you, know, you said about everyone else like to get out on the break there as well. Get that rebound, push the floor, had numbers. Collison going to drive inside. Going to draw a foul. And everything he's touched right now in this game has uh, turned to goal. Raph Thomas Edwards, Mosley Snevels. Yep, wholesale changes here. Smith. Graham Bell takes a seat, Corey Samuels takes a seat as Jackson returns to the game. Say Raph Thomas Edwards also in. Brad Green takes a seat for Bristol. Now Terry Olsen makes no mistakes on the first. A big sold out crowd at the Wise campus tonight. Every game since, well, every home game since October 2018, Gareth has been sold out here at the SGS College Arena. Full 750 capacity in the arena. I know it's one of the smallest arenas in the league, but it's certainly one of the loudest. Here's Ollison pushing in transition. Can't convert on the layup, and going to be a foul as Thomas Edwards gathers in the rebound. You see Tevin Olsen's frustration there after you know, missing the layup. That's his first missed field goal of this game. That's good defense over by, by Lee. I've got to say, I thought he you know, blocked that first one really well and then got called for the foul, I think, with the second attempt. So Raph Thomas Edwards going to the line for a couple. Of course, the uh, Flyers captain back for his second spell with the club. Averaging eight and a half points and just shy of six rebounds a game. He's a 71% free throw shooter on the season so far. Here's Manchester trailing by 14 points. Lewis finds Lee. Ball inside to Robert and it's stolen by Leslie Smith. Straight into the action, Smith with a uh, with a steal. Jackson puts it up and in. And welcome to the Bristol Flyers, CJ Jackson. Jones coming off the screen. Good pass inside to Evan Walsh. He makes no mistakes with the layup. Going to be a foul call on Jones though. As Jackson takes one to the face. straightforward call that one it's one of those ones I think where you almost want to try and take advantage of you know try and sneak up on, yeah. from behind and sure yeah there's no no sort of malice but you know if you're going to try and you know, knock that ball away with some force but just uh, to, you know, caught the player instead in the face oh the headbutt even it looks like the head's glided even so uh, looks like going to go for Manchester the penalty there for Manchester Giants Jackson will go to the free throw line and of course, CJ Jackson had a brief spell with the Leicester Riders last season before spending the rest of the last campaign in Sweden, where he averaged 10 points and five rebounds a game. Obviously had to come in at that short notice with the injury to Tijon Lucas last week against Surrey. And of course, injury with, uh, with Keith Johnson breaking his scaphoid, his wrist. So he's going to be out for, for an extended amount of time as well. 
So coming sort of thick and fast, unfortunately, for a fly with a bit of a roll and injuries all at the same time. Lewis diving inside. Hollison gets his hands on it, but the foul is called. And Tevin Hollison, see what he thought of the call. Just a second team foul on the Flyers, though. And it's hard to tell from that angle. Referee in the position, they made the call, so that'll be a pair. Uh, sorry, Joel. Yeah, you see Coach Kapula's there just calling a timeout on the floor. He's starting to have a healthy lead, Gareth, but wants to talk things through with uh, just over a minute to go in this first half. Yeah, he's got a timeout to use. He felt, you know, he sort of looked disappointed over something where there's some sort of defensive defensive play or set that he wasn't happy with or, or match-up or, you know, a scout, something like that that he wants to talk about, use his timeout for this first half. And uh, an important minute left. See, we'll try and build on the lead that they have. Just maintain that focus. Yeah, uh, Kate Brian Simonian looking to just draw something up here with just over a minute and change to go in this first half. Of course, tonight's game, first of a double header for both of these teams. They're both in action tomorrow. The Bristol Flyers travel to the Surrey Scorchers. Meanwhile, Manchester are back home to host the London Lions. And a quick reminder, you can watch both of those games over on the British Basketball League YouTube. And the games keep coming for Bristol because, of course, on Tuesday night, they're back in the European North Basketball League. And they travel out to Poland and they're taking on Start Lublin. And you can catch that game right here on Flyers TV. Our coverage will start at a half hour before tip-off. Ahead of the 6 p.m. jump. Lewis at the line for two. Well, seven points so far tonight for Nick Lewis. In a big game last week against the Newcastle Eagles. And of course, we mentioned about him and Raphael Thomas Edwards both playing on the GB under 20s national team. One of the stories that Raph uh, told me, in fact, was that they used to try and outcompete each other for their clothing, for their GB gear that they're given uh, from, the, uh, from, the, from the kit supplier. And they used to always try and, you know, whoever scores the most points gets to win Raph's t-shirt or wins Nick's t-shirt. And I think by the end of it, I think Raph Thomas Edwards <laughs> ran out of uh, GB, <laughs> GB, yeah, GB clothing, Gareth. Nothing Garrett. to give. <laughs> he had yeah. nothing left to wear on uh, <laughs> international duty. Raph might be a little bit bigger than Nick Lewis, so that'd be interesting <laughs> to see. A little, a little baggy on him, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Here's Jackson. Jacob thought about the three. Pulls it back out. Back top to CJ Jackson. Driving inside, reverse layup. Gets a friendly roll. And CJ Jackson puts it in for two. Here's um, Evan Walsh to the races, can't convert. We spoke about that in the build up. That's certainly what he likes to do. Thomas Edwards, nowhere to go. Finds Jacob though. Thomas Edwards at the short corner. Thought about the mid range too, but gives it back to Jackson. Around 10 seconds between shot clock and game clock. Jackson has to shoot with the shot clock winding down. Overcooks that one. And his last touch by Manchester with the shot clock turned off. Yeah, that was very fortuitous there from, uh, from the Flyers. Actually made the most of that last possession. One of the clock down and now 10 seconds. And looks like Coach Kapula is going to use another timeout to set something up. Try and take uh, advantage of this last possession with 10.7 on the clock. We saw what happened last time these two teams met. I mean, Flyers, they were able to build a big first half lead, and then Manchester, they came soaring back. So every point matters in games like this because although Giants, they're training right now, they have that ability to go on a run at any given moment. Yeah, and I'm sure that'll be part of Coach Kapoulis' uh, half time chat as well. You know, got yourself in a, in, a, in, a, in a good lead, but let's not remember what happened last time in Manchester. These guys are, are very capable of scoring in a hurry. Uh, need to maintain that focus. A chance for Coach Kapoulis to draw up a play, and, and Gareth is a, a former player of Coach Kapoulis's back in the NBL Division One days. What kind of look would he be trying to get out of this time out? Do you feel? I don't think I can remember that far back, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure Coach Ray's got a, a whole repertoire of sort of 
end line plays, baseline plays that he'll want to run through. Something probably familiar that they've maybe run in practice. They've got an idea, maybe a slight tweak here or there to it, but you know, he'll just want to you know, 10 seconds. He'll probably want to get the ball out, maybe take a bit of time off the clock and then get a good look. Maybe throw it out for a pick and roll, take a bit of time off the clock. Uh, and, they, and not allow Manchester to get a decent look if they get the ball back in possession. Yeah, it's one of those ones where you've got to really time your run almost in this uh, with 10 seconds to go. Because you don't want to put up a shot too early or too late. Here's Jackson. Finds Ollison. Ollison, Euro step. Nice pass inside to Leslie Smith who can't convert. And uh, with point one on the game clock, it's going to be a Bristol Flyers ball. And that was a you know pretty well executed play. Finish wasn't wasn't quite there, but got the look they probably were after. So um, you know well run play, just unable to execute. It's got to be a lob at the hoop really, as uh, the referee just. <laughs> I don't think Jackson was uh, expecting that ball there. Bit of confusion. Okay, Jackson back with the ball. Ball into that's going to do it. Has to be a lob at the hoop, really, for it a, does. A, a tip in. in there in that situation. But Gareth, a back and forth first half. Bristol Flyers, they really went to town in that second quarter, outscoring the Giants 22 to 11 for a healthy first half lead. Yeah, it was uh, it was very tight in that first quarter, but as you said, second quarter, Giants unable to get it done offensively, just the 11 points, and, uh, and Bristol Flyers with 22. And uh, you have to say, you know, deserving for the win at the moment. Great stuff. Thanks a lot, Gareth. Well, we're going to hot tail it back into the studio as we take a quick break as we break down all the action from the first half. Don't go away. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Good. Naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive. Then you would get more and more adventurous. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. Crystal Flyers podcast is back for a brand new season and is now sponsored by Web Games. That's right, we're here to bring you all the latest from around the club and all things British basketball. Whether you're new to hoops or a member of the Flyers faithful, the Flyers podcast has everything you need to get you through those midweek blues. The Bristol Flyers podcast. Every Wednesday on all major podcast providers and YouTube. Calm down before you stress up the groove. The energy a little different when the blessings are cool. Hey, cause I had time like I'm on my tiptoes. Baby, you think a little too small. I got big goals, baby. Hey, where the money? I look, I just need the info. Pronto, I go and get hard to climb at all. At the top, I found some relief. I finally got some peace. Carry on, I put myself in mood. Farm, slightly obsessed perfectionists making cider with nothing but love. As you do. I mean, why grow eight varieties of apple when you can grow 458? Mm, the apple spa. Because happy apples make better cider, obviously. Here comes the man himself, Martin Thatcher. Friday, 12.30, tasting time. It needs to hit the spot or not a drop will leave the farm. Yes! And that 
That's why Thatcher's cider tastes the way it does. Perfect. Welcome back to Flyers TV, where at the halftime break, Bristol Flyers lead the Manchester Giants 43 points to 28. And Gareth, a healthy first half lead for Bristol Flyers in this one so far. Yeah, mentioned sort of tight first quarter, but the second quarter, Bristol Flyers, their defence, a bit too much for the Giants, and able to push the ball in transition and get some good looks and you know, shooting the ball really well. Likes of Tevin Ollison making the most of those opportunities. Yeah, you mentioned Tevin Ollison. I mean, he went the first quarter and a half I think without missing a single field goal and the likes of Leslie Smith as well coming off the bench they're just providing that spark plug for the team right when the team needed him yeah they're playing with, with confidence you know there's no it seems there's too much pressure they're enjoying their basketball they're playing a team game and, and, and everything's coming like say taking shots at the right time in momentum knocking the shots down and it just sort of helps you then conserve energy for that defensive effort and really locking down Manchester Giants in that second quarter well, let's take a look at the story of the half in this game so far. And as you mentioned, Tevin Ollison, he really uh, came out firing all guns blazing in that first quarter. Uh, he couldn't miss out there, Gareth. No, sometimes when you're in that sort of purple patch, that form, um, you know, you just roll with it and, and keep shooting the basketball. And, you know, this man as well, trades on Jacob again, you know, shooting really well. But, you know, Ollison, that kind of distance between the, the, the three-point line, getting very comfortable at that position and making it look easy. Yeah, 17 first-half points for Trajan Jacob. He's three for three from uh, behind the, the three-point line. Uh, he, everything he's touching is just turning to gold right now. Uh, and then off the bench, he likes a Leslie Smith, eight points and seven rebounds in just under 10 minutes in this one so far. Yeah, it just helps that, you know, that kind of depth of player coming and having that impact for those minutes you know that is the real separation sometimes between you know well matched starting fives and having that energy and, and those players coming off the bench you know really help with that separation and looking at the other end of the court it's a well spread uh, offence <coughs> for Manchester Giants Nick Lewis uh, leads the way for them with 8 points so far in this one Jamel Anderson and uh, William Lee both on 7 points apiece but you look down the bench and I mean it's just Evan Walsh with just 4 points 4 so uh, solo bench points uh, for the Giants right now yeah so we mentioned about Evan Walsh coming quite late in that in that second quarter and sort of what he brings but yeah a real sort of struggle offensively for, for Giants so partly down to, to, to good defense defense from the Bristol Flyers but you know it seems like they're trying to get Roberton in close to the basket everything's sort of trying to go get fed into him um, but yeah not too much fluidity with their with their uh, offense in the second quarter what will coach Simonian be saying to his team in the locker room at half time you know his side trailing uh, in this one but as we said you know the last time these two teams mm. met his side went on a big run in the second half yeah I mean there's a lot, lot of experienced basketball players out there for the Manchester Giants so they know this game's far from done they've got the talent to be able to score in a hurry um, defensively they're going to have to sort of certainly tighten up a little bit um, you know probably be saying Ollison shooting the ball really well it's unlikely they'd be able to carry on you know, statistically for the for the second second half as well, but obviously you never know. But just sort of tighten up, look at tendencies where the players are, are looking to to score, getting hands up on the shooters. So, you know, he'll be he'll be sort of giving that confidence. And but you know, defensively, it's been a, an issue for the Giants all season, and and that would be his his main focus and, and concern really to try and stop the bleeding. Bristol Flyers are really dominating that rebound battle as well, and that was something that you highlighted in mm. this game. Uh, ahead of tip-off the likes of Bristol Flyers you know they lead the league in rebounds Manchester Giants uh, bottom of the league in rebounds and it sh it's certainly showing so far yeah exactly and, and we sort of mentioned with the, the two big guys who sort of coming back we thought that you know that would have a bit of an impact uh, on, on the rebound but it, you know you rebound as a team if you're not boxing the point guard out or, or the guards then they're getting rebounds as well it's a collective responsibility it shouldn't just be down to your taller players to grab the rebounds you know everyone needs to box out and get after the ball and, and Bristol Flyers 28 rebounds to, to 14 and and again, those second chance opportunities offensively, you know, it's no, no secret that that's what the Bristol Flyers are, are very, very good at. They will get after the ball. Well, here's a look at the stats at the half. And obviously, we spoke about that, that battle of the rebounds. But apart from that, Gareth, is there anything else that stands out of that page for you looking at the halftime numbers? Uh, well, yeah, on the, on the stats there, I think it says 3 point percentage, 0 for 10 on the on the game stats I've got, I've got three for, for ten for, for Manchester yeah. Giants but so 30% uh, but yeah the rebounding uh, the rebounding statistics there 
Um, points in the paint, um, I noticed like flies 22 to 10. So getting it done inside and out. So we talked about those sort of pull up threes from Wallace and Draker, but getting it done inside, you know, attacking the basket, getting in transi- transition, and just mixing up how they're, they're scoring, the, scoring the basket. Uh, one player that's really stood out in that first half is the likes of Tevin Ollison, and we spoke about it in the build-up. He really came out. He's, you know, the, the the team's leading scorer. He stepped up his numbers from last season. Like we saw his potential at the back end of the last campaign in the British Basketball League playoffs against Manchester Giants. But this season has really taken his game to another level. Yeah, he looks, you know, very comfortable. You know, when you when you as a player, if you're sort of relaxed and comfortable, you're enjoying your basketball. You're enjoying shooting the ball as well. Just good things happen, you know, when you when you're having fun. And he looks like he's having fun. It's it's all sort of you know playing in front of him. He knows where he wants to be. He's got that ability, you know, to get to the basket. But his shooting, you know, from from deep is is is, is great. And that's just giving him the confidence to do other things. What makes it more difficult to defend and opens up other scoring opportunities. Does that help for him? Because obviously it's a second season and with the club he's familiar with coach Kapoulos and you know having that season on your belt I imagine it just makes you feel more comfortable when you come back the second time oh around. certainly just understanding the teams how the game's been refereed the confidence that the coach wants you back for a second season he said he had a good second half scoring wise last year part of a successful team last year the highest ever finish for the Bristol Flyers and he's taken that and he's you know, grown with that responsibility coming back, as I said, you know, taking that leadership role a little bit, you know, him and Raf, um, you know, in, into the into the team and that leadership and, and taking that responsibility and enjoying playing basketball and you can see it you know, on the court. What will be the key message from Coach Capullos do you feel going into this second half? Because his side's got that that 15 point lead but mm. they can't get complacent in the second half right I think you, you've just said it Joe I mean I'm sure that will be you know the message it's it's half a, half a job very dangerous team Every every team in the British Basketball League are very capable of, of of clawing that that back, and it happened away from home as we mentioned uh, previously. So, full concentration uh, defensively. Great stuff. Thanks a lot, Gareth. Well, we are all set for tip off for the uh, for the third quarter, in fact, uh, of this game between Bristol Flyers and Manchester Giants, and it's coming up after the break. Like I'm on my tiptoes, baby. You think a little too small. I got big goals, baby. Hey, where the money? I look, I just need the info. Pronto, I go and get hard to climb at all. At the top, I found some relief. I finally got some peace. Carry on my own, I set the mood. The working, you put the work in, everyone knows you deserve it. Yeah. They must be blind like curtains, certain. Anything you got, you've earned it. Earned it. Sky is limited, reasonable. Yeah. Your summer high is achievable. Yeah. Can't stop me, I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. Every time they want to clash, I'm unbeatable. Trucks is running out of stock. And we're running out of clock. I'm not going to stop. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. The Bristol Flyers podcast is back for a brand new season and is now sponsored by Web Games. That's right, we're here to bring you all the latest from around the club and all things British basketball. Whether you're new to hoops or a member of the Flyers faithful, the Flyers podcast has everything you need to get you through those midweek blues. The Bristol Flyers podcast. Every Wednesday on all major podcast providers and YouTube. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Good. Naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive. And then you would get more and more adventurous. 
and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. Welcome back to Flyers TV, where we are all set for second half action between the Bristol Flyers and the Manchester Giants. Just a quick reminder that both of these teams are in action tomorrow over on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. The Flyers hosting Surrey Scorchers. The Manchester Gi the Flyers travelling to Surrey Scorchers even. The Manchester Giants hosting the London Lions. And then... Do join us on Tuesday night for a bit of European North Basketball League action right here on Flyers TV. Crystal Flyers taking on the third place finishers in the ENBL last campaign start, Lublin. That one tips off at 6 pm on Tuesday. Our coverage starting from 5 30 pm. Both teams getting set to retake the court. Big packed house here at the SGS College Arena tonight. We are underway for the start of the third quarter. Lee. Looking for Lewis. Screen comes from Lee, Ollison goes underneath it. Step back three from Lewis and it's an air ball. And that is not the way Manchester would have wanted to start this third quarter. No, it was a patient offence, and uh, Nick Lewis with the shot. This is everything, as I said, if you're sort of looking for that spark straight off of the, uh, out of the changing room. That wasn't it. CJ Jackson. Top two, Graham Bell. And the handoff with Ollison. Screen from Green. Ball kicked out to a wide open Graham Bell for three. And here the Cooks for triple. For a passing transition, and William Lee puts it in and the foul. And he'll go to the line for a three point play. A great offensive basketball there, that transition. William Lee running the floor. Great pass. Just coming underneath the basket there, underneath the arm. Gets the arm one. That is a good start to the, uh, to the second half of the Giants with an arm one opportunity. Now, William Lee now up to nine points. So far in this one, he's had nine points last week as well. A season debut for Newcastle. Jacob thought about the three, but kicks it inside to Brad Green at the final second, and it's stripped by Lee. And here comes Manchester the other way. Jamel Anderson floats it up too much on the layup. So a bit more energy from the Giants defensively. Very active so far in the second half. Oh, it's a nice pass inside to Brad Green. Fake the shot and Brad Green is wide open underneath the bucket. Lewis, top to Lee. To pass. Wide open triple is good. Oh, Jalen Harris. Oh, big defensive breakdown there for Bristol Flyers. Manchester making that extra pass wide open down the three Jacob to Graham Bell at the elbow Turn around. nothing but net for RGB a little 360 on his pivot foot decides he wants to have a shot knocks it down that was a incredibly difficult shot to make it's going to be a foul called against the Flyers and Tevin Ollison, you can hear him, not happy with the call. And we'll send Nick Lewis to the foul line. First one down. Puts his tally up to nine points so far tonight in this one. Yeah, they slotted him into the starting lineup in recent games. 
interesting to see him in the, the, the starting five. As he uh, converts on the second. Chips it down to a 12-point game. Jackson. Screen from Brad Green. Jackson pulls up for three. The ball goes in and out. Rebound secured by Anderson. Screen comes from Robertin. Ball inside to Robertin. Again, it's going to be a foul. And the basket will count. And Legend Robertin this time will get the line for a bonus. Yeah, that's all coming out of good defensive stops from the Giants. Getting that stop, pushing in numbers. Robertin attacking the bucket hard. Gets the arm one, enjoys it. A good start to the second half from the Giants. He'll have a chance to chip this down to a single digit game. He can convert on the bonus free throw. And it's almost like a carbon copy of the game we saw up at the National Basketball Performance Center earlier on in the season between these two teams. Flyers, they raced out to an early lead in the first half. Manchester chipped away at the, uh, the lead. Uh, Flyers ended up winning that game by four, but it certainly was uh, a tight finish in the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, nice. I think defensively, if, uh, they seem to have really sort of stepped up their intensity, and that's leading to good opportunities, pushing the ball, getting those arm ones by you know, going downhill, attacking the basket, or coming out of defensive play. Interesting here, Gareth, to see, you know, Coach Simone is not really leading the timeouts here mm. in these... Uh, in these huddles, assistant coach doing the duty there. Yeah, I've seen that. We're sort of watching Giants, and I saw sort of a few people commenting on it, and you know whether the head coaches, but you know, there's certainly a coach with plenty of experience who feels that you know the assistant coach has you know, plays to, to draw up. Then you know, we don't see it all that often. Well, Legend reverted at the free throw line. This has really stepped up his game during the off season. On Instagram, he was training with the likes of Ryan Richards. Yeah, I saw the same one as well. Yeah, I mean, as a guy with plenty of experience and played at a high level, of course. And uh, you're only gonna, good things are gonna happen when he gets coached by that player uh, that's recently played and you know, big body as well. And how to use it, uh, how to use it well. And a turnover for Bristol at the other end, and now Manchester a chance to make this a single digit game. Lewis, the lead, puts it up, D by uh, CJ Jackson, knocking down the bounds. Raph Thomas Edwards returns to this one. It's going to be Rorel, Gra uh, Rorel Graham Bell who uh, takes a seat. Both struggling with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> both struggling. <laughs> both struggling tonight, Gareth. <laughs> Ball into Lee. Three pointer is up and short, and it just trickles over the back. I think there's a foul called inside on Anderson, I think. It is Jamel back. Anderson over the top, uh, over the back foul. This be the first team foul on Manchester in this third quarter, though. Seven minutes to go in the third. Flyers with a 10 point lead here against Manchester. Nine points to four so far. Just a far struggle to get it done offensively. Ball into Jacob. Nice pass. Great defense from William Lee. And now Manchester have numbers. Harris driving inside. Lefty layup, no good. And Bradbury grabs the rebound. Saw it, unable to capitalise with that good defence from Giants securing the board, pushing the ball in numbers. A real threat to the Bristol Flyers. Oh, nice pass from CJ Jackson and Trajan Jacob with a two handed jab. Yeah, that cut back door, that baseline. And the Bristol Flyers crowd going. Ball lobbed up to revert it. Green does well to cut it out. Here's Jacob again. This time looking for Thomas Edwards. Backing down Lewis. Thomas Edwards puts it up and in. Seems so easy there, didn't it? For Raph Thomas Edwards just sort of going wherever he wanted to. Not much pressure there from the Giants and able to put a fairly straightforward shot in the basket. Oh, great steal by the Flyers. 
to continue this run as Jacob deep three drains it. Of course. And that is a very Trajan Jacob shot. Timeout Giants. He's hobbling a bit there. I hope he's all right. But he certainly can't afford for him to go down as he heads to the locker room. Spoke about the injury troubles with this uh, Bristol Flyers team so far this season. See the club therapist Craig, Craig Barden going back to check up on him. To see uh, going back. 7-0 run for the Bristol Flyers, which all started with this backdoor pass from CJ Jackson into Trajan Jacob. And then knocks down the two and knocks down the three as well. Deep three-pointer in transition. And uh, yeah, you see him just walking gingerly after that triple went in. I don't know if he came down on his ankle slightly, but he hobbled straight off into the, into the changing room. The coach with Kuros will be... Uh, to make a substitution. We'll try and keep you up to date with that one as more develops. But Coach Kapoulos, you see, you know, is, uh, you know, they had that lead and then Manchester, they slowly clawed their way back into it and then just like that, Bristol Flyers went on a run and they, they rebuilt the, the healthy cushion again. Yeah, nine points. Um, well, less than a minute ago, we said they had four points for the quarter and then a quick five points to... Um, Take the, the quarter scoring 11 to, to the Giants, 9 to, to Bristol Flyers. So good response from the Flyers. Lewis takes the screen from Lawton. Good D by Brad Green, but just better offense. And Nick Lewis puts it in for two. That's such a difficult shot it's over a taller player, fully extended, just to hang and then to shoot it off the backboard. Wallace turns the corner, floats it up off the back iron. Gets a bobbles around, thought about it, and got the drop. Lewis for three. It's short that time. It was, a, it was nothing but net, but just the wrong side of the basket. Samuels. Stolen away by the Manchester Giants. Pushing in transition and count it. Then Anderson will go to the line for a bonus. Yeah, sometimes in those situations, especially with someone as quick as Anderson, you know, I know you try to chase down the ball, but sometimes, uh, yeah, probably maybe a little unlucky with the call. Good tough call there, but a bit of contact for Anderson with a strong finish and he'll get an opportunity to uh, pull another one back. Right, here's a look at some of the key plays from the third quarter and Manchester Giants they open the third quarter with that little mini run Bristol Flyers had no answer for them early on in the third quarter Gareth no and I think it did stem from that increased energy on that on that defense you know, Manchester are very effective on this when they do get a stop and they get out numbers and push the ball in transition and that seemed when they sort of tend to get a lot of their points so Bristol Flyers then able to get a few buckets offensively, which of course slows down the ability for the Giants to push the ball in transition and sets them up in that half-court game where they probably struggle slightly more than getting out and running. And the Flyers, they were able to respond with a 7-0 run to push the lead out once again. And that man there, Trajan Jacob, a dunk followed by a triple, that really provided the energy. And then what an incredibly tough shot from Nick Lewis over the outstretched arms of Brad Green. Yeah, very tough shot, just keep composure and, and to shoot over you know, 6 11 and you know, wingspan as well, straight up. Tough shot. Trying to play Anderson back on the line for his um, one play. Doesn't look like we've seen Jacob back yet on the bench. Still must be getting some treatment. Well, Jamal Anderson, of course, he leads the team in scoring this season. 
spent that spell with the Leicester Riders. He was more of a defensive player. We know exactly what he can do on the defensive end. He always uh, gets the assignment of guarding the opposition team's best player. But yeah. this season, we've just seen that step up in his numbers, his scoring on the offensive end, really fitting into that new role in Manchester. Yeah, he's sort of, certainly sort of very capable offensive player as well. I think probably just how good he is defensively just overshadows his, his offensive ability. You know, he's always very capable of you know, knocking down shots and attacking the basket, but you know, now his offense is, is matching sort of defensively and raising the bar on both aspects. Well, I thought Manchester just switched to his own defense on that last possession. Lindsay Smith looks to return to the, uh, the game. Brad Green is the one to make way for him. Green comes from Lee. Harris looking to dive inside. Blocked by Ralph Thomas Edwards. Just sends it into the front row. Ten seconds on the, on the shot clock. Here's Lewis again. Green comes from Lawton this time. Ball into Lawton. Going to work on Smith. Great defense by the big fella. And Flyers have numbers. Leslie Smith just being big, he didn't jump for the ball there, just made himself large. Olison puts it in at the other end and count it. <laughs> Sorry, just to get the praise of Leslie on the, on the defensive end. Flyers to the defense into exactly. offense. Exactly. Just like that, you know, blocked from Leslie Smith at one end, and then you see here, Tevin Olison, he gets fouled and able to just stay composed and stay balanced. Yeah, it was a big bit of contact, knocked him off balance. As you said, Joel, able to maintain his balance concentration and he'll find himself on the line for an extra point well, 21 points so far for Ollison make that 22 points in this game so far still got 13 minutes to go Lewis stops on a dime and gets a friendly roll in the mid-range too just inside the key Samuels. Ryan's looking for a travel, nothing called by the officials. Samuels still nowhere to go. It's going to be a foul called on Lewis. There's a, it's a fall there as well from, from, from where we're looking at the screen. They're almost a five second call there. The amount of pressure on the, on, on, I think the technical foul called as well. Yeah, Nick Lewis not happy with the call and picks up a tech. See his reaction there, just off the screen. He must have said something to the official because yeah. Olsen now. Well, it's going to be Landolfi even to shoot the technical mm. free throw. Yeah, I'm going to have a bit of sympathy there with uh, Nicholas Lewis there. I thought he did a pretty good job defensively. Oh, it's probably Landolfi unable to convert on the free throw. He fires ball from the sideline though. to inbound. Lions have uh, rebuilt their 15-point lead that they had at the end of the first half. Olison kicks it out to Thomas Edwards. Shot clocks at three. Edwards has to shoot. He's short. And the inbound by Borsier. Screen from Lee. Borsier kicks it out. The triple is good. Nothing but net for Nick Stamplin. Here's Jackson. Screen comes from Leslie Smith. CJ Jackson finds Thomas Edwards in the corner for three. And good that time. Chance for Manchester to cut it down to a ten-point game or nine if they can knock down a three. Here's William Lee right on cue. Makes it a single-digit game. Timeout Flyers. Yeah, great spell there from the Manchester Giants. Back-to-back three-pointers. Cuts it down to single digits. And Coach Kapoulis, no, uh, no other option there but to call a timeout and try and slow this momentum down from the Giants. Now, William Lee is uh, up, now up to 12 points for the Manchester Giants. Really made an impact on both ends of the court. Three players in double figures so far for Manchester, led by Nick Lewis, who has 
14 points. Yeah. It was once a 15 point lead at the end of the half. It's now been cut down to nine. Courtesy of Manchester Giants run late in the third. And Gareth, it's this point again where, you know, this game could either go one way or the other. These final two and a half minutes could be a crucial period in this game because if it's Manchester that can go on a run coming out of this timeout, we could have a, have a sort of game on our hands. If it's the Flyers, it could, you know, go the other way back in Flyers' favour. Yeah, we saw uh, the Flyers respond to the Giants came out came out well in the uh, in the beginning of the third quarter put a run together flies able to claw that lead lead back again uh, but then right there said giants gone on, a, on another run winning the quarter 22 to 16 uh, in this quarter so uh, yeah crucial two minutes really if, uh, if Masha can carry on that momentum we're all set for a, an exciting end to this uh, to this game with, uh, one quarter remaining now, which way will this game turn? Here is Jackson. That's off with Jacob, who's back into the game. Deep three from Tim and Ollison is off the mark. And the ball just trickles out of play. Again, a promising signs there to see Trajan Jacob back out on the court. Because uh, we saw him go back to the locker room uh, just earlier on in this quarter. Yeah, maybe just had a, a little tweak or something, get a bit of treatment. Um, had sort of in his first season had a, had a few injury issues um, which have, uh, hindered his, his play the majority of games uh, for, for that but obviously had that year away come back this year fits in really well with, uh, with coach Kapoulis and his team Jacob looking for a three no good and as the Giants still with momentum here and William Lee jumper made it a seven point game here's Lewis top to Lee Anderson now guided by Jacob it's going to be a foul called against Trajan Jacob and that will be the Flyers in the penalty for the last minute and a half of the third uh, Trajan Jacob I think still particularly comfortable after that last one like he uh, was particularly pain free there gets called for the foul now uh, Jamel Anderson now chance to cut this down to a five point game he can knock down a pair of free throws. He gets his tally up to 11 points to go along with his six rebounds. Deep breath. That's a big, big shot. Second one is good. And just like that, Gareth, we have ourselves a ball game here. Yeah, Manchester Giants just going about their work quietly, just uh, chipping away at that lead. And as you said, Joel, just a five-point deficit now. Olison kicks out to Jacob, thought about the three. Drives inside oh. for a two, a one and a slam. Trajan Jacob out of nowhere. And that hopefully will give the crowd a bit of a lift, a bit of confidence. But what a throw down that was. Trade on Dave Jacob taking it straight to the heart of the Manchester Giants defence. Well, could that be the spark that Bristol Flyers need as Borsier need to get a tough fadeaway jumper to go at the other end? And that's one way of silencing the crowd after that monstrous dunk. Great play from the Giants. There he is again, this time for three. Never could that one, but a long rebound falls to Wallison. Green comes from Smith. Hollison deep two this time. He can't convert. And Flyers with two good looks on the offensive end on that possession. Yeah, just no playing out of rhythm slightly. It's easier said you know, seeing the guys making big shots, but Lewis driving inside, able to draw the foul once again. A chance for him to go to the line. Make this a three-point game with a pair of free throws. Well, here's a look at that dunk from Trajan Jacob the lane just opened up for him and yeah, he got up high there didn't he a lefty jab for Trajan Jacob <laughs> Nick Lewis knocks down the free throw Let's look, have a look at that dunk from Trajan Jacob I haven't seen him get up there too often no, this season, but when he does, 
certainly is highlight real stuff. Well, Nick Lewis can't convert on the second. Shot clock is off here. Five seconds to go in the third. Jackson kicks out. Ollison open for three. And that will do it for the end of the third quarter. The Manchester Giants able to out outscore the Bristol Flyers. 29 points to 18 in that third quarter. And Gareth, we have ourselves a good game at the Wise Campus. Exactly. Sort of, you know, replicating the, uh, the away fixtures. Solid third quarter from Manchester Giants. 29 points in this third quarter. Just 11 in the second quarter. Really getting it done offensively. I think a lot of that coming from good defensive play. Able to push in transition. And now like making shots from behind the arc. Nick Lewis with some great individual, uh, individual ability. And things just clicking nicely for Manchester at the right time. And it's on the. It's not necessarily the offensive end for for Bristol Flyers. They scored 18 points in that quarter. It's the defensive end. I mean, Coach Kapoulos, he certainly won't be happy with conceding 29 points in 10 minutes. Certainly not. And uh, you know, selling percentage at half time. The message will be defensive uh, duties. Going over the game's not done. And Manchester Giants coming out strong in this third quarter. And uh, yeah, defensively. Shelling in 29 points uh, defensively in a quarter. Coach Kapoulos will not be happy with that. What will Coach Kapoulos be saying, do feel, to the team in this timeout? Because <laughs> they had a, a lead by as many as 17 points at one point in this game. Well, it's and a family down being down to four. It's a family show, so I don't even <laughs> replicate what he'd probably be saying, but you know, I'm sure it'll be on the lines of defensive needs to be slightly better than what it was <laughs> in the last quarter. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you're right there, Gareth. Is uh, Here's a look at some of those key plays from uh, Manchester. It's a great ball movement as well, but you know, leading a player like William Lee that wide open from the, from the top of the three-point line. And again, you see, he's so tall, and he has that ability to just jump over, you know, jump over the top of defenders. So you know, he pulls up for a mid-range two like that. It almost feels like an uncontested jumper. Yeah, it's a difficult shot to, to contest, but he has that ability. Got really nice shooting form, really nice touch. Uh, for the basketball and um, that's a great play though isn't it uh, well, that's certainly one to make a top 10 plays of the week if you're looking for a nominee well, mustn't take away really uh, really good quarter from the Giants and it's set up for an exciting fourth quarter now well, final 10 minutes of action the wise campus are up the way and Nick Lewis with the steal puts it up and in and we have ourselves a two point game at the Wise Campus. Jacob to respond, looking for Green inside. It ends up throwing it out of play. Feel that Bristol Flyers just lacking composure on these last couple of possessions. Yeah, no sort of momentum in the first half. It's all about momentum, taking shots, you know, fluid shots coming out of the offense. Things were nice and smooth and easy, but Giants, their defense really. Ooh. Anderson on the follow is uh, no good. Uh, Stanley even on the follow, no good that time. Deep three on the way. Off the back iron, no good. And it's last touch by the Flyers. And you feel momentum well and truly in Manchester's favour so far in this fourth quarter. Yeah, they certainly seem to be playing as a more cohesive unit in this. Uh, in this uh, second half, we just saw the huddle there, talking through two flyers, weren't getting in a huddle, just to waiting to match up with the Giants. Here's Lewis, skip pass, out to Borsier, open lane, extra pass to William Lee, great ball movement from Manchester, and they're unlucky not to get that jump and the fall by William Lee. Ollison pulls up for three at the other end, it's a quick shot on the offensive. Uh, possession that time for the Flyers it's those sort of plays there we maybe just want a little bit of so take a little bit of time off the clock Giants have got the ascendancy just want to maybe slow down a little bit going to be a Flyers ball last touch by Lewis as Trayvon Jacobs getting set to return to the game Anderson's coming out Now, Tevin Olsen, 22 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists in this game so far tonight. 8 for 11 from the field. Certainly 
Done it all so far for the Flyers. Two point lead though. Eight and a half minutes to go in this one. And the basket's oh, waved oh. off because it's a travel by CJ Jackson. And Manchester will get this one back. A chance to tie or retake the lead. Oh, just like him to a jump stop and maybe just slid a little bit, a little shuffle after the jump stop. Lewis. Swing comes from Lee. Nick Lewis to the basket, puts it up, and we are tied at 61 points apiece. Nick Lewis is splitting the defense. Lots of space for him to operate in there. Goes to the basket uncontested. Ball screen from Green. Out to Jacob. Guarded by Borsier. Shot put down to six. Green comes from Brad Green once again. It's a tough shot from Trajan Jacob. And you feel the Bristol Flyers are just forcing up threes here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Coach Pulis isn't really liking what he's seeing. You know, potentially if you're struggling offensively, go through a set, try and get yourself an easier, an easier action, an easier look. Force, yeah. Offensive, well, it's going to be a defensive foul even on Jackson. Fighting through the uh, ball screen. Corey Samuels will return to the game. Jackson takes a seat. Well, you feel the, uh, the energy just almost sucked out of the Wise campus in this fourth quarter. Uh, all seeming fairly comfortable at the break. As Lewis is going to inbound here. Manchester, chance to retake the lead. Oh, it's going to be a foul called. Sorry, John. Nick Lewis is pulling the strings there offensive, isn't he, for, for the Manchester Giants. Second team foul on the Flyers in this fourth quarter. Third personal foul on Joel Graham Bell. Borsier doing back. Here's Anderson. Guarded by Thomas Edwards. Fighting through the screen. Anderson loses control of it. Really off the foot of Jamel Anderson. And this one will go back to the Flyers. Samuels going to bring it up over the timeline. Finds Graham Bell. Going to be a foul called off the ball on Stampley. It's one of those ones where you know, a lot of off ball movement out there, yeah. just grabbing the player as he's trying to fight through those screens. Yeah, I didn't, didn't see the player there, missed that one. Referee right on there for Stampley for holding. Here's Samuels. Screen comes from Smith. Samuels going to drive inside. Kick out to Graham Bell. Thought about the three and shoots it and ends up overcooking it. Offensive rebound for Bristol though. That's what they've done all season long. Jacob for three. Again, they can't convert from downtown right now. Yeah, really struggling you know, from that outside shot, all going so nicely in the first half. Really sort of dried up and Jacob hobbling as well. That's not good uh, good signs for for Coach Kapoulis. Giants three is off. Good hustle from Stampley. And it's last touch by Graham Bell. And now Jacob will head to the bench. He'll head back to the locker room even. And that is not a good sign for Bristol Flyers fans. Yeah, it does seem like it's that ankle he was holding there. Just sort of coming after that shot that he made. A few fell awkwardly on it, but going back for some more treatment. But the last thing Coach Pulis would want is, a, is another injury. Actually, two games coming up. Quick succession. Borsier. Guided by Thomas Edwards. Pulls up for a mid-range two and splashes it. And after trailing by as many as 17 points, 
Manchester Giants have retaken the lead. Yeah, outstanding second second half for Manchester Giants. Talked about it. Certainly got the capability of coming back into the game. Playing some good team basketball defensively, really stepped up. Rebounding's really stepped up. Pounds called up the floor. 13 foul on Manchester. This game is going down to the wire. Ball into Graham Bale, back to Ollison. Screen comes from Leslie Smith. Ollison looking to go one on one. Kevin Ollison to the hole, can't convert. Offensive rebound, again can't convert. And the ball last touched by the Flyers. And you see the Giants, you see Coach Simonian happy with his team's defense on that possession. The bench absolutely loving it. Yeah, it's very difficult when you're sort of struggling to score and players take it, you know, that individual responsibility. You know, you have to trust your teammates, have to go through the, the plays there. It just fell down the last, sort of, well, probably the, the whole of the second half, really. There's been a bit too much of individual play, not as much reliance on, on team sets and looking for big plays and big shots and uh, makes it a little bit easier when it's sort of one going against the whole team it's a bit easier to defend and Manchester Giants doing a great job pushing out defensively on the offensive end and Manchester Giants are on the verge of picking up it will be a big road win and they're big to find the British Basketball League table Borsier all out to Anderson Clock down to six. Here's Borsier driving middle. Kicks it out. Deep three ball from Lewis. And it's rebounded by Raph Thomas Edwards. 6 0 in the fourth quarter. Flyers yet to score. In a bucket in the Flyers. It's going to be a turnover instead. And there's a loose pass. Timeout's been called on the court as the media timeout flies just zero points to their name in this fourth quarter so far. And Manchester Giants, after trailing by as many as 17, lead by two. Yeah, it's just very difficult at the minute. Bristol Flyers ain't get anything going offensively. 18 in the third quarter, zero in the fourth quarter. Manchester Giants with six. So not to be taking massive advantage of, uh, of the Flyers and able to score. And, Coach we so need to find a solution and try and maybe get back to basics of playing some good team basketball and try and manufacture some good looks. It's one of those ones also, you know, you know exactly what he'll be saying right now. It starts with the team's defense. Yeah. And and then we go to the offensive end, it's about working the ball around there quite a few times this season. I know, I know the, um, the, the, the the first half of Lions shoot the ball well from downtown, but when the shots dry up, it's, you know, it's a single pass of the mm. shot on the offensive end. And, I'm sure Coach Capullo is here looking to draw something up on the offensive end to get a couple of paint touches, a bit of inside-out play, and, and get some open looks. Yeah, just for us here, all those were last, you know, the last several offences have all been pretty rushed and a bit sort of one pass, go to the basket, one pass, shoot, you know, that sort of, sort of action. And sort of just feel like you've, they've lost control a little bit of, uh, of what's happening in Manchester Giants. And they've taken full advantage defensively, pushing the ball, making some big shots themselves. Fans enjoying themselves here at the Wise Campus behind their team, despite them trailing by two in the fourth quarter. It's great to see Many people involved. Great little piece at halftime there, getting the next generation, the next, you know, Corey saying, you know, talking about Greg Street and what an influence he, he was when he was younger and just sort of paying back and getting, you know, boys and girls involved with basketball. Really good stuff you know, from all the all the, the, the clubs in the league trying to bring on that next generation. Well, we are all set for a grandstand finish here at the SGS College Arena. Giants leading this one by two. Oh, nice pass inside, and Anderson can't convert. That's a big let off from Bristol Fly. I felt certain Anderson would put that away. Great pass. Jackson out to Thomas Edwards. Oh, and again, Flyers are going to turn this one over. It's going to be an over and back. Yeah, I can't feel which, which 
team are going to get control. Both teams statistically probably the bottom two in terms of turnovers and uh, certainly big crucial plays coming up now. You need to look after the basketball, try and get yourself a shot. Going to be a foul called on Thomas Edwards. Foul called on the floor. And Bristol Flyers gone over five minutes here, five and a half minutes in fact, without a score in this fourth quarter. Yeah, a bit scrappy, really, both, both teams at the moment. Borsier inside to Lewis. Flyers caught napping on defence, but Giants unable to capitalise. Ollison, screen from Green. Ollison to the hole, lefty finish, no good. Another rebound by Manchester. And yeah, once more, you know, just not opting for that. And not really team play, Ollison just taking it on himself. Had such a good first half, trying to, trying to get it done, get his team back in, but almost fall into the hands of the Manchester Giants who are one on five Green at Lee open for three knocks it down and you have to close out William Lee at the top of the key for three and he makes the Flyers pay from downtown Manchester Giants their biggest lead of the game so far and tonight nine nine to zero zero to nine in this uh, in this fourth quarter Three minutes 54 without a uh, left uh, left in this fourth quarter without a score. And you see it on the offensive end. I mean, William Lee likes that shot. You know he's got that ability to shoot it from downtown. You do leave him open. Just an inch of space. He will take that three. And uh, that time, able to knock it down. Match the Giants. They went and they run the right point in this game. And now just under four minutes to go. It's their biggest lead of the game tonight, Gareth. Yeah, as I said, right time to it. Three minutes 54, and you just feel the momentum is with them right now. You, you know, at this moment, feel that Flyers are on a bit of a run, or there's you know any sort of glimmer of hope of getting anything sort of put together. So, big time out for Coach Kapoulis and trying to get a response from his team. Bristol Flyers respond in these last four minutes. See Nick Lewis there with a little, little chat to uh, Rattle. Probably want some of his Bristol Flyers clothing after this game, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Here's Jackson. This pass inside is cut out by Lee. And Manchester Giants' momentum is well and truly in their favour right now as Lewis able to draw the foul on Ollison. And that will be the Flyers' fourth team foul. And just feel frustration beginning to grow. Need to keep cool heads. It's only five points. A little technical hero there. Just compound. Here's Borsier. Guarded by Jackson. Hand off with Lewis. Lewis has Ollison on him, but again able to draw the foul to count it. And he will go to the line for a three point play. Coach is urging the team to get together in the huddle, try and figure it out themselves. Nick Lewis, himself a big second half, and that is a big shot. Extend that lead to seven. Coming yes. off the screen. Oh, you see an incredibly tough shot from Nick Lewis. Now up to 21 points for him in this game so far. Make that 22 points. And the Flyers trailing by eight. Still yet to get a score in this first fourth quarter. Ollison, screen comes from Green. Ollison kicks it out. Jackson now driving baseline. Looks like a triple team coming in on him. CJ Jackson's layup's no good. Rebound by Manchester. It's going to be an offensive foul called against the Giants. Crystal Flyers get a possession back here. 
Under three minutes to go in this game. You see Coach Caputo just talking to Tim Ollison just at the bottom corner of your screen. Yeah. See the frustration just slowly mounting up for him. I'm sure it won't be long before he's, uh, he's back on the court. Purpose the flies, most potent offensive weapons, but struggling a little bit in the second half. Jackson looking inside for Green and ends up throwing it out of bounds. And again, the struggles continue for Bristol Flyers. They've just fallen apart in this fourth quarter. Yeah, the pressure certainly, certainly building. Two minutes fifty to go. Bristol with an eight-point lead. Bristol Flyers have not yet to, yet to score in this fourth quarter. Charles Edwards almost knocks it loose. Here's uh, Lewis. William Lee now inside kicks it out to Anderson. Anderson able to draw the foul and that will send him to the line because Bristol Flyers they are in the penalty you see it on the replay now Jamal Anderson chance for him to extend this lead for Manchester he's got 12 points and 8 rebounds so far tonight also 4 assists as well He's the team's leading scorer this season. But the damage really has been done by Nick Lewis. 22 points to be the game's joint leading scorer. And Anderson goes two for two. As Tim Ollison will return to this one. After having a few words with Coach Kapoulis on the bench. Raph Thomas Edwards would be the one to make way for him. Hollison. The drive inside. Tevin Hollison to the hole puts it in. And Bristol Flyers their first field goal of this fourth quarter. And boy was that needed. Yeah, we'll have a coach through the centre. <laughs> Just seem to open up there. Able to get a, a fairly straightforward look at the bucket. Still a lot of work to do. Just under two minutes. Anderson. Guarded by Jacob. Anderson pulls up for three. Off the back iron, no good. And a look by shot from Manchester this time. Flyers need to push the tempo a little bit now. Running out of time. Not loose by Borsier, but into the hands of Jackson. Shot clocks at 10. CJ Jackson driving inside. Can't convert, but there's Brad Green on the follow, and he can't convert. Rebounded by William Lee and a foul on Green. And we'll go from one end of the court to the other because Bristol Flyers, as we say, they're in the penalty. And William Lee, chance to push this out to a 10 point lead. What an incredible turnaround it's been, Gareth. In this second half, they've converted a 17-point deficit into what could be a 10-point lead. Incredible. Yeah, full, full credit coming out of that second half. He just fell defensively. The tempo in had risen a little bit. Flyers really struggling to score in this, uh, in this fourth quarter. And Nick Lewis, offensive rebound by the Giants. Here's Lewis. Finds Lee. Lee from the elbow. Back iron, no good. Rebound by Graham Bell. They have to push the ball. They need some quick scores. Here's Ollison. Splitting the defense. Nowhere to go. Kicks it out to Jacob. Jacob, corner three ball, splashes it. As he's hit in the build up, it's the tough ones, Gareth. Yeah. It's the on Jacob seems to knock down. It's a good time to get that one to go. Still an awful lot of work to do. Nick Lewis has taken a lot of time out of the game, sensibly so. All inside to Anderson, guarded by Jackson. Shot put down the three, and it's turned over. Just need a push. Under 30 seconds to go. Jacob swings to Ollison. It's going to be a foul called on William Lee. Fouls to give. A smart foul in the end. 
Because Tim Ollison certainly had the open lane on that possession. Hey, you see that incredibly tough shot from Trajan Jacob in the corner. Ollison, screen comes from Brad Green. Tevin Ollison to the hole, puts it up. Can't get it to go, but will shoot a pair of free throws. And it could be too little, too late here, Gareth. You kind of feel they've left themselves a little bit too much to do, I have to say. Not impossible. But very difficult to... Uh, It'll be interesting to see what happens after these free throws, whether they're going to foul straight away or try and play defense and get a steal. I feel they're going to have to try and foul. The timeout's been called here on the floor. Both teams looking to talk things through. The Manchester Giants just need to see this one out for what will be an incredible victory if they can hold on to this one. And that's for the uh, Bristol Flyers. Have it all to do here with 14 seconds to go. Here's some of the crucial plays down the stretch for Manchester. Mason Borsier knocking down that mid-range two. And then William Lee wide open at the top of the key from downtown. Says thank you very much. And then here's Nick Lewis getting in on the action with a three-point play. An incredibly tough shot. That's for the Flyers. Tevin Ollison, that's their Flyers' first field goal of the fourth quarter. It's around three or so minutes to go in the in the game when they finally scored that first field goal. Really dried up in that fourth period. And then Trajan Jacob, floodgates open for him. And it's always those tough shots that he somehow is able to get to go. Big free throws coming up, 14 seconds left of the game. Tony Wilson knocks down the first. Chance for him to cut it down to a four point game with just over 14 seconds to go. Good. All in. It's going to be a foul call quickly on Jackson. A smart foul in the end. Of course, wanting to stop the clock. We'll send Manchester to the line, though, because of course, Flyers are in a penalty. And uh, Nick Lewis will head to the foul line. He is an 85% free throw shooter on the season. 22 points for him in this one tonight he's seven for nine from the free throw line in this game so far and he's unable to convert on the first second one rolls around the rim Drops in. It's a five point game with just over 11 and a half seconds to go. Flyers have to work quickly here. Ollison, deep three. Can't convert that time. The rebound secured by Lee. And that'll just about do it for the Manchester Giants for what's what be an incredible win for them. Ninth in the league. But of course, with the likes of William Lee coming back into their squad. He's a. I'd like to think they'll slowly work their way up the league table as this season rolls on. Yes, yeah, certainly. Great performance. You know, difficult first half for Manchester Giants. You know, turn it around massively, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the third quarter offensively scoring 29 points. And in the fourth quarter defensively restricting flies to just seven. You know, showing both uh, such an improvement really on that first half. Able to pick themselves up and well-deserved victory away from home to put them out performance. Uh, Ollison's going to fire up from downtown and that will do it. An incredible turnaround for the Manchester Giants as they pick up an important win down at the SGS College Arena. Yeah, massive, massive. Uh, we, yeah, breaking that six-game six losing streak.
to come to a Bristol Flyers that have shown some good form and able to turn around that first half deficit. Full credit to the Manchester Giants and on that second half performance, fully deserving of the win. Yeah, it was a 17 point lead for the Flyers at one point in the first half. And Manchester Giants, they kept chipping away back at the uh, back at that lead and able to lead by as many as 10 as well. Incredible turnaround for them as they, as you say, break a run of six straight defeats to return to winning ways down at the Wise Campus. Gareth and I are going to take a short break, but do join us after the break as we'll break down all the key actions from tonight's game. Obsessed perfectionists making cider with nothing but love. As you do. I mean, why grow eight varieties of apple when you can grow 458? Mmm, the apple spa. Because happy apples make better cider, obviously. Here comes the man himself, Martin Thatcher. Friday, 12.30, tasting time. It needs to hit the spot or not a drop will leave the farm. Yes! And that's why Thatcher's cider tastes the way it does. Perfect. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Good. Naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you could conceive. And then you would get more and more adventurous. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. Welcome back to the Flyers TV, where the Manchester Giants have just pulled off an incredible comeback over the Bristol Flyers on their home court. I mean, they trailed by as many as 17 points in the game. They led by as many as 10. Um, Gareth Till, former Flyers captain, joins me here in the studio. And Gareth, where did it all go wrong for the Bristol Flyers tonight? Well, I think uh, Manchester have seen a very difficult first half for them. Certainly, uh, Flyers on the ascendancy. Uh, Manchester Giants came out strong in that, second, in that second half. And as I said, offensively, that third quarter, 29 points uh, on the board and then restricting Flyers to seven points. I mean, uh, unable to score until, what, three minutes to go, three, three and a half minutes to go in that fourth quarter. So, you know, Manchester Giants put in a good all-round performance in that, in that second half. And... You know, Bristol Flyers really didn't have an answer. They just tried to force the ball, a little bit of one-on-one -on -one play, maybe not in rhythm, which was complete opposite of what we saw in the first half. Everything was in rhythm. Shots were coming to them, knocking them down. A, lot, a little bit too forced for me in that second half. Pressure built. 
and Manchester Giants are able to you know, get that win, well-deserved win. Yeah, talk about that dry spell in the fourth quarter for Bristol Flyers. I mean, it's, it wasn't Flyers basketball that we've seen all this season so long. I mean, normally it's the, the two or three passes, the paint touches inside, swinging it around for an open three. This time around, it was essentially um, you know, a lot of one-on-one, like you say, and, and, and pull-up jumpers. A, a, lot of, a lot of one-on-one, and you know, defensively, obviously 29 points in that third quarter, you know, getting the rebound, looking to push the ball, a- weren't able to get anything in, in, in transition either. So, you know, really struggling. When you kind of go one on one, you've got five guys basically around the basket. Getting offensive rebounds is going to be harder as well because the floor's not spread. You can't sort of attack your defender one on one to get offensive rebounds. So, yeah, really unlike, you know, Bristol Flyers uh, basketball in that, you sort of saw, saw the best and the worst there of the team. Well, let's take a look at the story of the second half. And as you say, Manchester, they really outscored the Flyers. I mean, 29 points to 18 in that third quarter. It was an incredible run to start that period, uh, knocking down threes. And it, again, for them, it, it started you know, um, in transition for them. They really got some good looks on the open floor. Yeah, they certainly you know, addressed the issues defensively from the first half. They just looked more intense, you know, maybe it was the trip down, just trying to get the first hat out of the legs, but looked almost a, a completely different team defensively, putting flies under pressure and then able to leak out in transition, getting a few quick scores, then relaxing offensively, then, you know, Nick Lewis doing his thing. Uh, Lee there knocking down shots from outside. It all just kind of came in rhythm for them, a, you know, a complete role reversal of halves. Yeah, and you see, uh, you know, Leslie Smith doing his best uh, off the bench for Flyers, and he, he had a had a great game. But this second half, it really was, you know, all Manchester Giants. They they really went to work on the the, the Bristol Flyers. And from a Flyers point of view, I mean, you know, they've they've dropped one to Surrey Scorchers last week, who are tenth in the league. They've now dropped one to Manchester Giants, who are ninth in the league. It's well documented about their injury problems uh, this season. Uh, they brought in CJ Jackson. Where do they go from here? Because, of course, they travel back to Surrey again tomorrow for a, a tip-off at Surrey Sports Park. Yeah, again, another, another tough, tough game. And, you know, at this level, this professional level, you know, you have to regroup, you have to get together as a team. And I think... Coach Caputo, you could see at the end of the game there, he was sort of urging his players to sort of get together. And so over the past few years, that he's not needed to do that. Players have all just automatically got together and, hey, you know, we're in this, we need to figure this out. So I think that will need to be sort of, you know, looked at as well. That leadership on the court, things aren't going well. Let's get together, let's figure out what we're going to do. And, you know, they're not going to have a time for a practice tomorrow, but, you know, they're going to be, you know, hurting after tonight's game and, and after last week away at Surrey as well. So they're going to need to regroup and, and try and sort of bounce back. Yeah, I guess that's the, the positive thing to take for, for Flyers. You know, they lost to Surrey last week, but the fact that they do play them again, you know, a week later, it's just another chance for them to, to put things right out there on the court. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's certainly no sort of time to sort of, uh, you know, think too much about tonight's game. You've got to kind of, you know, walk, call, warm down, cool down, get a good stretch in, and, uh, and Coach Kapoulis will have his scout ready for tomorrow. They need to sort of bounce back and put a, a big performance. And, you know, over the years, sorry, we've always been a difficult, a difficult opponent uh, at their place. So, um, tough game tomorrow. Well, let's take a look at the key stats from tonight's game. And, I mean, this, this game was, um, the second half really was uh, key for, um, for, for the Flyers. I mean, they, uh, the fight was for the Manchester Giants. They really ran away with it in the second half. You spoke about the, I mean, Flyers, they out-rebounded their opponents 48-39 to 39, uh, in this game. And uh, really, uh, you know, despite the rebounding, Gareth, what was it? I mean, normally when you win the rebound battle, you, you, you go ahead and win the game. But this time, not so, not so much the case. Yeah, I think. Well, I think Giants, uh, in terms of the second half, certainly improved on their on their rebounding. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but shot selection from the Bristol Flyers, you know, probably helped assist. As I said, they weren't really spreading the floor. It was all very much one on five, one on four. You know, getting everyone in the paint, able to get those rebounds and passing the ball. So you know, Giants certainly you know able to grab more rebounds. Uh, but you know, turnover wise, 17 turnovers uh, for the Bristol Flyers and Manchester Giants 11. So you know, obviously that didn't help either. A bit too sloppy at crucial points of the game where Manchester were just beginning to sort of edge away. You know, f- a few sloppy turnovers, few misguided passes, and that's just compounding the misery. Just a word on tonight's game MVP, Nick Lewis. Incredible performance uh, from him. He did it all out there, really, uh, in the end. 23 points, uh, four rebounds out there on the court. Um, Six for eight from two, seven for 12 on the night. uh, And really got it done when the game mattered most. I mean, this is an incredibly tough shot for that three-point play against Tevin Ollison. 
Yeah, I mean, they were sort of struggling a little bit offensively, but Nick Lewis stuck with it. He certainly took took the responsibility on his shoulders and, and was able to get some tough shots. You know, he's been playing well all season. The player played with lots of confidence and able to make those big plays at the right time to, to see Manchester Giants o- over the line. And, you know, when he's playing well, he's going to create more attention from defenders and that's just going to free up other players to do their thing. And, and that's kind of the tale of the second half, really. Just in that third quarter, 29 points, you know, a lot of it guided by him. Some great individual play and then, you know, some good team play on the back of it. Great stuff. Thanks, Gareth. Well, it certainly leaves Bristol Flyers with a lot to do going into tomorrow's game against Surrey Scorchers. And then, of course, they're off to start Lublin. They're off to Poland on Tuesday. So the games don't get any easier for, for Bristol Flyers. They have a busy schedule coming up. Yeah, exactly. And it's uh, you can't you know, afford to just feel down about this, this sort of back-to-back games that they've lost. You know, it's a tough schedule coming up. It, it, no one said it was ever going to be kind of easy having this schedule, uh, and that's part of the growth of the team. And, you know, they're really going to have to sort of dig deep tomorrow, put in a good performance, try and get a win in a very difficult place, and then a tough trip to Poland. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of time to knuckle down and sort of stand up as a team and as individuals to try and get this back on track. Don't forget, you can watch tomorrow's game up in Surrey on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Then you can watch Tuesday's game uh, right here on Bristol Flyers TV as Flyers take on Start Lublin. It's a 6pm tip-off on Tuesday night. Our coverage will start from half past five. Then don't forget the next home game for Bristol Flyers. It's Saturday, December 2nd, when they take on the Sheffield Sharks. Uh, You can watch that game on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Tickets are selling fast for that one. They're almost sold out as well. So if you are thinking of going to that game, do make sure you get your tickets quickly. And then it's the big one, Flyers in their Christmas cracker, taking on Landstead Hammers in the uh, European North Basketball League. It's Tuesday, December 5th for a 7.30pm tip-off at the SGS College Arena. Well, Gareth, final thoughts from you from that one. A disappointing night for Bristol Flyers in the end, but a chance to turn things around tomorrow. Quick turnaround going into Surrey. Yeah, disappointed. It was always capable. You know, we talked about half time how well Bristol Flyers were playing, but the the capable capability of the Manchester Giants and they and they proved that right once more. They were close when the gate the reverse fixture at Manchester, but they came through and, and finished off. So you know, full credit to Manchester Giants for sticking with it and really turning the game on its head and and going away with a massive uh, victory for them. You know, on that on that losing streak so full credit to the Giants well thank you very much for joining us for our coverage here this evening on Flyers TV and that's going to do it for our coverage here this evening a big win for Manchester Giants at the SGS College Arena for Gareth Till I'm Joel Osborne saying so long and we'll see you next time